20 years have passed since the tragedy when demons invaded the human world. Gray demons with wings flew in the red sky against the backdrop of an ominous blood moon. They sat on destroyed buildings and on the debris from them. Chaos was going on in the city, and there was smoke everywhere. These monsters knew no mercy and very quickly plunged the world into chaos. They destroyed houses, started pogroms and fires, killing innocent people. The man tried to save his life by running away from these predatory demons that were chasing him. These demons looked terrifying. They had red, sinister and glowing eyes, sharp horns and huge fangs. Humans, once at the top of the food chain, became prey to these demons, causing their numbers to decline markedly. A demon with a snout resembling a dragon was reaching out to the corpses of people lying motionless in one heap. People were saved from complete extermination only by sudden mutations that endowed some people with superpowers. One of them, for example, could release green spheres that struck demons, shocking them with electricity. The guy with purple hair struck one of the demons with his red sword. Over time, such people occupied their niche in society. They began to be called hunters. In order for as many people as possible to learn how to fight demons, hunter academies were created. Dazia, Dongju Hunter Academy. It was already evening in the city. The sky was painted a soft orange hue, and purple clouds floated across it. The setting sun softly illuminated the academy building. In this academy, students with superpowers are valued far above others and have the status of nobles. A guy with brown hair walked in the courtyard of the academy and showed off his abilities. Two girls, one with brown hair and the other with blue hair, watched in amazement as the guy showed them the fire that he released from his palm. They were all dressed in uniform, it was a black tracksuit with red stripes. And in this academy there was a guy named Fang Cheng, who considered himself absolutely mediocre. He stood with his back to the metal mesh, his face was scratched and drops of blood were visible somewhere. He had shoulder-length black tousled hair and red eyes. Fang Cheng has been studying at this academy for three years, but has not awakened any special abilities. Therefore, the other students called him the weakest in the entire academy. Fang Cheng's hands were chained to the fence so that he could not escape. He breathed heavily and thought that he would be bullet even after graduating from school. A blonde man with an earring named Chen Tianyu hit him in the face with his silver metal bat while laughing at him. The bat sparkled with lightning, emitting current. The bully said that this weakling is quite resilient, and they have been beating Fang Cheng for half an hour and he is still conscious. Chen Tianyu hit the guy in the face with the bat again, only from the other side. The bully had a nasty grin on his face. He stepped back and slung the bat over his shoulder. He stood between his friends and said with a smug smile that Fang Cheng himself should understand that according to the rules of the academy, only those who try their hand can graduate. Chen Tianyu, calling Fang Cheng a non-entity, added that he was never able to do this, so he would have to stay for another year of training. The hooligans looked menacingly at the guy who could not do anything to them in response, being tied to the fence. Fang Cheng's face looked even worse. There were more bruises and bruises on him. His whole face looked tortured. Fang Cheng looked up and, breathing heavily, defiantly said that the fact that Chen Tianyu had awakened his powers did not make him great. Chen Tianyu was furious and furious at his words. He swung his electric bat again and shouted that he couldn't understand how great it was to have such powers. He continued to shout that weaklings who have never been able to awaken their strength are only good for wiping their feet on them. Fang Cheng closed his eyes, waiting for another blow from Chen Tianyu. There was no attack. Fang Cheng opened his eyes and was surprised by what he just saw. All three bullies were carried away by a strong current of wind, which lifted them into the air. Fang Cheng turned his head to look at his savior with a confused face. It turned out to be a girl who was walking in their direction. She asked Chen Tianyu if it was fun for him to bully his own classmate. Chen Tianyu himself and his henchmen were already lying on the ground. The girl said that she was truly disappointed in them. She had long black hair with bangs and pink big eyes. With her hand, she controlled her wind ability. Her name was Long Yu, she was the head of Fang Cheng's class and was the strongest student at the academy. She was also Fang Cheng's childhood friend. He looked at her in amazement with wide eyes and parted mouth while she looked at the bullies with displeasure. The hooligans had already risen from the ground and helped Chen Tianyu to his feet. He asked Long Yu why she was helping such trash as Fang Cheng. She didn't answer their question. Her gaze became cold and condemning. The girl folded her arms over her chest. Instead, she ordered them to get out of here, and threatened that she would kill them all if they did not do so. The hooligans immediately began to run away, leaving Fang Cheng and Long Yu alone. Chen Tianyu mentally turned to Fang Cheng and said that he was very lucky today. Long Yu helped free Fang Cheng by breaking the chains from the fence. The guy rubbed his hands and awkwardly thanked the girl, looking down. 
she looked at him and said that the final exam is in a month, and he has not yet awakened his powers. She asked if Fang Cheng planned to stay for a second year. The guy was a little confused by this question, but then he looked up at the girl and answered her that he did not plan to stay for a second year, because he simply could not afford it. Five years ago, his parents died as a result of an attack by demons, so his older sister began to take care of the family's finances. She wanted Fang Cheng to get a good education, which is why she got a job quite early and began to save a lot on herself. Fang Cheng no longer wanted to force her to pay for his tuition. His older sister had exactly the same black hair, but it was shoulder length. The guy looked down sadly and said that if he couldn't awaken his strength before the start of the final exams, he would simply quit his studies. Suddenly, Long Yu sharply hit the fence with her fist, which scared the guy. She ordered me to stop talking about this nonsense. The girl looked menacingly at Fang Cheng and shouted that he shouldn't give up ahead of time, and there was still a month before the exam and there was still hope that he would awaken his strength. He looked at her in surprise, without saying a word. Long Yu walked past the confused guy and rather harshly said that if he could not awaken his powers before the exam began, then he would remain a mediocre loser for the rest of his life. She turned her gaze in his direction, looking at him coldly. Fang Cheng also followed her with his gaze as she walked off into the distance. He looked after her and thought that Long Yu was so straightforward and cruel, just like in his childhood. Her silhouette was softly illuminated by the golden light emanating from the setting sun. Fang Cheng raised his head, smiled and stretched his fists. He decided that since there was no turning back, he could only go forward. The golden setting sun quickly gave way to an ominous blood moon that painted the entire city red. The townspeople went home, immersed in their own thoughts, but some of them noticed Fang Cheng, who was persistently running along the sidewalk. He decided that he would begin his preparation with a 20-kilometer run home. Fang Cheng tried to run as fast as he could. He decided for himself that even if others consider him the weakest student at the academy, he should not give up and give up everything just because of such a trifle. Fang Cheng gritted his teeth and continued to run forward. He wanted to become as strong as Long Yu. He decided to double all his training, and if he pushed his body to the limit, he would definitely stimulate the awakening of strength. Fang Cheng began to run out of a small alley onto a busy road, and then stopped. Frightened people who were in panic were running towards him. An explosion occurred in the building opposite, and pieces of concrete scattered all over the street. More people ran towards Fang Cheng in panic, trying to escape the chaos and horror that the demons had caused. A little girl with pink hair and a dress called for help in a weak and frightened voice. Behind her was a huge gray demon with four red eyes and sharp teeth. He was dressed in golden armor. The girl was shaking in horror, clutching a stuffed bunny toy in her hand. She moaned quietly and pitifully, trying to escape from the demon. Fang Cheng gritted his teeth, feeling fear and horror as he looked at the huge demon. It was a D-rank demon named Blade who had recently appeared in the city. The demon threw aside a piece of the building that was preventing him from grabbing the girl. The poor girl screamed in fear, afraid of being grabbed and eaten by this monster. Fang Cheng frowned and bared his teeth. He took the little girl in his arms and began to run away from the demon who was about to grab the child himself. The demon looked at them questioningly, slamming his fist into the ground. Fang Cheng closed one eye and turned around. He thought he might be crazy, but he just couldn't stay away. The demon hissed and with a threatening grin began to run towards his victims. He slammed his blade attached to his arm at Fang Cheng's back, piercing right through him. Fang Cheng's eyes became round and his pupils became very constricted. The girl watched this in horror. The second end of the blade came out of the guy's stomach and he screamed shrilly. The girl screamed, not knowing what to do. Fang Cheng turned to her and ordered her to quickly run away, and tears flowed from her eyes. She said in her frightened little voice that she would bring someone to help. Blade Demon with a grin on his face began to lift Fang Cheng off the ground, causing him to begin to writhe in terrible pain. The monster threw the guy so hard into the wall opposite that it even began to break into pieces. Fang Cheng had a gaping hole in his stomach and began coughing up thick blood. He considered himself a fool for believing that an ordinary person could become a hero. The demon smiled ominously, showing off his sharp fangs. He started laughing loudly and evilly. Fang Cheng's capillaries in his eyes burst and he was bleeding from his mouth. He looked angrily at the blade demon grinning at him and thought that in his eyes he had already become a delicious snack. The grinning demon began to walk towards the guy who lay among the rubble and clutched his wound. Fang Cheng decided that he should escape if given the chance, but there was no such chance. The demon stepped on him with his huge foot, preventing him from escaping. He pressed it into the ground harder and harder, hissing angrily. Fang Cheng thought about how much overwhelming power this demon has and he cannot resist it. 
he lowered his gaze to the paw that was crushing him and regretted that he could die such a worthless death. He thought about how he didn't even have time to become a hunter, didn't have time to become as strong as Long Yu, and in the end, he couldn't give his older sister the life she deserved. Fang Cheng, under the pressure of the monster's paw, began to growl. He must survive and kill this monster. Fang Cheng completely sank into rage and despair, screaming over and over again that he would kill him. He bared his teeth, frowned and glared at the demon, trying to escape. Several system windows appeared. One step away from death, you awakened a frantic thirst for murder, and fulfilled the conditions for merging with the demon of extermination. Your life is coming to an end. Do you want to merge with the demon of extermination? Fang Cheng found himself in some strange place where he was surrounded only by darkness. He was confused and scared. He did not understand where he was and who was talking to him. He asked what this fusion with a demon was. Suddenly a red hand grabbed him by the shoulder. The second hand began to approach the guy's face, running its finger along his cheek. After that, more red, demonic hands appeared and pulled him down. He wondered where he ended up and even thought that it was the world of the dead. A system window appears, danger warning. You have 10 seconds left to live. A huge gray hand appeared in front of the guy's face, from which red flames emanated. A new system window has appeared. Do you want to merge with the demon of extermination? Fang Chen continued to be dragged by the demonic arms, and he screamed and asked if he had any other choice. The hands pulled him deeper and further. Fang Cheng was in despair and screamed. The veins in his face bulged with tension. He understood that the merger was his only chance. He pointed his index finger towards the index finger of the demon's gray hand. System window, merge successful. Fang Cheng and the demon touched their fingers, after which the guy received the power of demon extermination. His consciousness returned to the real world again. His body began to emit a red aura, which surprised the blade demon who was still pinning him to the ground with his foot. The red aura pushed the demon back, growing larger. The blade demon looked in shock at the guy's metamorphosis. Gray demon hands with large claws began to emerge from the red aura. Due to the aura, completely black eyes with a red pupil appeared, which made the blade demon even more confused. Fang Cheng extended his demonic arms and took a step forward. He activated his demon slayer form. There was a small explosion that lifted all the fragments lying nearby into the air. His demonic form looked like a tall, gray demon with red eyes and several horns on his head. There was a mark on his chest, but no mouth. He looked around himself and couldn't believe that he had turned into a demon. He clutched his head in confusion, his eyes clouded. Fang Cheng didn't understand why his head was pounding so much. He lost his spatial orientation a little, and his consciousness began to become cloudy. The guy didn't understand what was happening. At this time, the blade demon began to run towards him. While the guy was holding his head, a voice in Fang Cheng's head began to order him to kill the blade demon. He begged to be destroyed. The blade demon was already preparing to attack him and prepared his blades on his hands. At the last second, Fang Cheng grabbed the demon with one hand directly by the blade, thereby stopping it. He grabbed the blade with both hands and then threw it to the other side. Blade demon hit the wall, which began to crumble from their collision. Fang Cheng grabbed his neck as he coughed up blood. The guy began to bring him closer to him, while simultaneously trying to strangle him. A long red aura appeared behind Fang Cheng, which exploded the ground beneath her. Fang Cheng slammed Demon Blade into the wall, breaking it even further. Blade howled in pain, writhing in agony. He tried to hit Fang Cheng back with his blade, but he dodged without much difficulty. The guy shouted to the demon that he was too slow, attacking him. He punched him hard in the face, causing Blade to be thrown against the side of the building. Two guys watched them from afar, holding smartphones in their hands. One of them asked if it seemed to him that one demon was beating another demon. His friend told him it was incredible. Fang Cheng noticed them and turned towards them, looking ominously. The guys were scared when their eyes met with Fang Cheng. The voice in Fang Cheng's head was ordering them to be killed because they saw him. He grabbed his head again, not understanding whose voice it was and why it wouldn't stop. The voice continued to order to kill those people as soon as possible, because they saw everything. Fang Cheng, still clutching his head, ordered them to run away from here quickly if they did not want to die. His left eye ceased to be demonic, the shell around them disappeared and human skin appeared. The guys began to run away in fear, and one of them even wished Fang Cheng good luck in the fight against the demons. At this time, behind him, Blade began to come to his senses. Fang Cheng thought that even if he merged with some demon, he would definitely retain his humanity. He clenched his hand into a fist. The blade demon began to attack him, screaming loudly and baring its teeth. Fang Cheng was prepared for this, so he reacted immediately. He shouted that his fists would only be aimed at his enemies, then punched Blade in the chest with all his might. 
After this, the demon tore into small pieces, which began to evaporate right in the air, leaving nothing of itself. Several system windows appeared, you killed the blade demon. You stole the blade hands. Fang Cheng looked at his hands, on which these blades immediately began to appear. He realized that when he kills a demon, he steals its fighting ability. This is why this form is called Demon Slayer, and now he can become stronger by killing them. Fang Cheng looked at his blades and thought about how he trained so long and hard, but was never able to awaken his powers. But now that he had merged with the Demon of Extermination, he was able to gain a new ability simply by killing the Blade Demon. A system window appeared, the lust for killing has disappeared, so you have returned to your human form. The demon's form began to fade, turning into a red aura that evaporated into the air. He realized that he returns to his original appearance when the desire to kill someone disappears. Fang Cheng inspected the scene of the battle with Blade. He understood that this battle had not gone unnoticed and one of the hunters was most likely already heading here. If anyone finds out about his demon slayer form, they will definitely experiment on him. He needed to get out of here as soon as possible. It is impossible for anyone to find out about his transformation. He began to run away from the battle site, heading home, suburb of Dongju. This area was quite densely built and all the buildings stood almost right next to each other. There was a clothesline hanging near a small building with things hanging on it. Fang Cheng walked home through narrow streets where there were not many people. A moped was parked outside one of the buildings. The guy approached the door of the building, along which there were boxes, old furniture and other rubbish. He opened the door and entered the apartment. He stood at the aisle and let his older sister know he was home. He didn't look very good. Fang Cheng had small scratches on his face and his clothes were all torn. His older sister came out to him and asked why it took him so long to return home. She and her older sister were similar in appearance. She had long black hair and yellow eyes and was wearing a white t-shirt, blue jeans, low-heeled shoes and a light blue cardigan. She ran up to him and asked why he was all wounded. He rubbed the back of his head awkwardly. Their house looked quite simple. They had old, shabby furniture and walls with small cracks visible. Fang Cheng laughed and asked her not to worry, saying that he was fine. He told her that he came across a demon on the way home but he managed to escape from it, and his clothes were pretty badly damaged. He looked away and thought that fortunately, after merging with the demon, all his wounds healed on their own. Tears began to appear in her eyes. She said that he should still be careful and reminded him that their mom and dad were also just returning home from work, but this did not save them from the demon llamas. Fang Cheng looked at her knowingly and said that he remembered this and she need not worry. His older sister sighed sadly and began to wipe tears from her eyes, saying that they wouldn't talk about sad things and she'd better go cook dinner for him. She gently put her hand on Fang Cheng's shoulder. He thanked her and looked out the window that led into the courtyard. There were clothes hanging on clothes dryers. Fang Cheng decided to take a shower. They had towel racks and a washing machine in the bathroom. He changed into a white t-shirt and blue shorts after getting out of the shower. He was wiping the towel off his head when he noticed a plate of dinner that smelled delicious. He looked at her in amazement and immediately sat down at the table, picking up chopsticks. He was happy about the beef ramen and said it smelled good. The elder sister smiled tenderly and told him to eat. While Fang Cheng was eating the noodles with gusto, he asked what she had for dinner. She awkwardly looked away and said that she ate bread at the store where she works. Fang Cheng put the chopsticks on the plate and said displeasedly that it was always like this. He asked why she always subsisted on bread and kept everything that was most satisfying or expensive for herself. Fang Cheng even started to get a little angry and asked why she didn't think about herself at all and shouted that it was time for her to stop patronizing him like that. His older sister's lips began to tremble, and tears appeared in her eyes again. She turned away, crying bitterly, and said that she herself had decided so and did not regret it. He was her brother, the last living person, the only person in the world who was truly dear to her. Fang Cheng looked at her a little dumbfounded, feeling pity and regret. He hit the table with his hand and said that this would not go on, and from that day on he would start working. He has power and he will use it so she doesn't have to worry about it anymore. He asked her to let him give her a better life. His elder sister was shocked by these words. He looked at her with a confident and firm gaze, and she softened and looked back at him. She smiled at him and told him that she believed in him and he could do this. Fang Cheng smiled back at her happily. She started to leave the room and told him to finish his noodles before they got cold while she went about her business. He smiled as he followed her with his eyes. The girl went to the small kitchen. She began to wipe the kitchen cabinet with a rag, wiping the tears from her eyes. She thought that her brother Fang Cheng had really matured, and she was pleased to see him so determined. 
She smiled softly and hoped that he would successfully pass the exam and qualify as a hunter. Fang Cheng went to his room and sat on the bed, looking at something on his phone. His bed was near the window. The whole room was covered with posters. The dilapidated walls were cracked in the corners. Tomorrow was supposed to be a day off, and Fang Cheng decided to take advantage of this free time to hunt demons and earn some money. To do this, he needs to enter the official website of the Union of Hunters and look for the latest news about demons. He began scrolling through the feed in search of a suitable task. He came across an advertisement about Ranky man-eating octopuses living in an abandoned park. Reward for each, 3,000 yuan. All hunters are invited. The completion time is unlimited. Attached to the ad was a photo of an octopus. It was the size of a whole tree. Fang Cheng realized that the abandoned park was only 10 kilometers away, and the payment was decent. He looked contentedly at the screen, realizing that he would definitely go on this task. If he used the power of the extermination demon, he should be able to deal with them with ease. He suddenly became gloomy when he thought about the fact that this demon had settled in his mind like a parasite. He had already felt the influence of this demon on his thoughts during the transformation. Fang Cheng put his phone aside, imagining that this demon was now sitting behind him. He had to use this power carefully, otherwise the demon could take over his body at any opportunity. He sighed sadly. Fang Cheng understood that there were no easy paths in this world and he would have to use this power to achieve his goals. It was raining and thundering outside. Thin white lightning flashed in the sky. The battle area between Fang Cheng and the blade demon was cordoned off and nearby there were armed security forces with guns in their hands who were guarding the area. A man with white hair and an umbrella in his hand looked at the wreckage, which was being examined by workers in raincoats. He asked one of the workers who was supervising the search whether they had checked CCTV footage of the area. The worker, who was also under the umbrella, replied that the blade demon had become very angry, so all the cameras in the area were destroyed and the recordings could not be restored. In this case, the man ordered to find and interview all eyewitnesses, and said they must find out who exactly killed the blade demon. This man had shoulder-length hair, wore an eye patch over his right eye, and his other eye was yellow in color. He was wearing a white shirt and a black coat, and had a fang hanging from his neck. The worker lowered his umbrella and responded positively, walking away in the other direction. The man with white hair gloomily looked at the scene of the battle and thought that the D-rank demon was not just killed but literally torn into small pieces. An ordinary hunter is definitely not able to do this. He wondered that based on the analysis of the scene, it was likely that the one who killed this blade was another demon. It was early morning the next day. There was the sound of a passing train coming from a nearby station. Fang Cheng walked through the wastelands of an abandoned park. All the buildings were destroyed, and their walls were collapsing under their own weight. There were piles of construction debris around the abandoned buildings. In the distance, multi-story residential buildings could be seen, standing close to each other. The lampposts were already covered with corrosion, and some strange red growths were located on them. Fang Cheng looked around. He didn't think that a place that once had so many offices would turn into this. Behind him, among the rubble and pieces of concrete, man-eating octopuses were already waiting for him, vilely moving their tentacles. The guy walked past the bodies of people who lay motionless. They may have died while hunting man-eating octopuses. Fang Cheng turned around in horror and looked at the corpses. He assumed that they were hunters, and judging by the state of the bodies, they had died quite recently. He came closer to them and noticed huge holes in their piles. Fang Cheng decided that their insides had already been eaten by demons. At this time, octopuses crawled up to him from behind and clung to the heads of the corpses, using their bodies. Fang Cheng turned around, because something told him that danger awaited him. His pupils shrank in alarm. He was right. Several demons were already preparing to attack him, who parasitized on the bodies of the victims they killed. Each body had a huge gaping hole in its chest. The mouths of the octopuses with sharp fangs were wide open, and huge, orange eyes peered out of them. They had various weapons in their hands, pickaxes, axes, sabers. Fang Cheng looked at them menacingly and began tucking in his sleeves. He was excited that these man-eating octopuses had finally shown themselves to him. Fang Cheng understood that it would be difficult for him to cope with the monsters parasitizing on human corpses. The monsters all jumped on Fang Cheng at once, preparing their axes and swords. He reacted with lightning speed and jumped away from the attack at the last moment. The guy landed a few meters away from them, and the octopuses themselves didn't even have time to realize it. After Fang Cheng merged with that demon, even his human form became much stronger and faster. He grinned contentedly at the demons and activated a red aura in his left hand. He had the ability to partially borrow the power of the demon that inhabited him. 
hordes of demons parasitizing on the corpses of hunters ran towards Fang Cheng, aggressively preparing to attack him. A system window appears, danger detected. Automatic activation of blade arms. Huge red blades appeared from the guy's hands. They somewhat resembled the blades of a praying mantis. Fang Cheng was surprised when he looked at them, because he didn't think that they would activate automatically. He even decided that it contained artificial intelligence. Fang Cheng slashed his sharp blade at the body of one of the demons. He decided to try out these blades in his human form. Another parasitic octopus was also attacked by the guy's lightning attack. A minute later, two demons attacked him, but Fang Cheng easily cut both of them into small pieces with his blades. All his weapons were covered in demonic blood. Behind him lay three corpses of octopuses that had been torn to pieces. Apparently, Fang Cheng cannot gain abilities from cannibal octopuses. Perhaps this is because they are only E-rank demons. Some noise was heard from afar, which made Fang Cheng tense and wary. He opened his mouth slightly and his pupils constricted slightly. The guy turned around and saw hordes of octopuses. There were a lot of them. Each of them hissed threateningly and held weapons in their hands. Fang Cheng was shocked. He frowned and was a little confused. He realized that he had been lured into a trap. It seemed like those three demons were just bait. The demons began to approach Fang Cheng, who stood at a loss. They all rushed at him at once, preparing to attack him with their weapons. Fang Cheng tried to see their number, but realized that there was no end to them. He had no choice but to defend himself and kill them. He mercilessly began to chop, cutting off their legs and arms. The guy turned around sharply and saw that two demons with axes in their hands were rushing towards him. However, he was able to react in time and cut the monsters in half. Despite this, the guy was surrounded by an army of demons on all sides. He didn't understand why there were so many of them and thought that he had wandered straight into the lair of these demons. There were pieces of tentacles on his school uniform and in his hair. Fang Chen gritted his teeth and continued to defend himself, for he had no other choice. Tentacles and other limbs flew in all directions as the man-eating octopuses continued to attack him. There were too many of them. Fang Cheng already had few options for movement. He realized that he could not continue to fight with them, because without a demonic form he still reached Ranky, and sooner or later the creatures would overwhelm him in numbers. He decided to attempt to escape, running away as quickly as possible, but the entire crowd of demons chased after him, not seeing any obstacles in their way. Suddenly, vile tentacles began to crawl out of the ground and began to grab Fang Cheng by the legs, rendering him immobile. He turned around in horror, looked down, and realized that the tentacles had grabbed him so that he couldn't even move. A D-rank demon named Octopus Sage appeared in front of him. He was much larger and scarier than ordinary man-eating octopuses. He had his own body. The octopus on his head looked ominous, and on its tentacles you could see what looked like faces screaming in fear. He had a huge scythe in his hands. He laughed evilly and said that he would now see what kind of prey fell into their hands this time. He looked Fang Cheng up and down and tisked displeasedly, saying that he was just a small shrimp that wasn't even good enough for a snack. Fang Cheng couldn't believe that it was a D-rank demon, horrified. He felt an aura emanating from him that was much stronger than blades. Fang Cheng raised his head and felt panicked by how close the octopus sage was to him. He shouted to his subordinate demons, attracting their attention, and ordered them to tear the guy into pieces and bring him to him. Meanwhile, the tentacles that emerged from the ground completely engulfed him, tying not only his legs, but also his arms. A huge crowd of octopuses had already begun to surround him, and at this time anger and aggression boiled up in Fang Cheng. He knew that at this rate he would become food for demons. The whites of his eyes began to turn red, and the capillaries inside him began to burst. A voice in his head ordered him to kill all his enemies, repeating this over and over again. In the crowd of man-eating octopuses, Fang Cheng's red aura began to flare up, signifying his transformation into a demon. A system window appears, the demon slayer form is activated. A bunch of man-eating octopuses were cut into small pieces immediately after Fang Cheng appeared in demon form. Bits of demons' bodies flew in all directions. Fang Cheng said in a low, ominous voice that since they forced him to take this curse form, he would give them an unforgettable team. He shouted death wishes as he swung his blades through the air and cut through the bodies of his bloodthirsty enemies. As Fang Cheng hacked at the demons, tearing off their limbs and dismembering their bodies, the octopus sage watched him in surprise. He didn't think a person could turn into a demon and thought it was very interesting. Fang Cheng frowned as he continued to attack the creatures approaching him and shouted that he only wanted to kill a few E-rank demons to earn some money, but he could not even think that his simple wish would not come true. The octopus sage appeared behind him and began to laugh evilly, which made Fang Cheng confused. The monster smugly said that although he had acquired the body of a demon, 
He was still a pathetic ant who was desperately trying to survive. Fang Cheng turned to him and frowned aggressively. The pupils in his black eyes shrank. He ran, pushed off the ground and jumped at the sage octopus, aiming his blades at him. He desperately shouted how dare he, a demon who considered himself the top of the food chain, judge a person who was just trying to survive while at the very bottom. His blades almost reached the demon's head, but he substituted his thick-handled scythe in time, after which he pushed Fang Cheng away from him to the side. The guy landed on his feet and rolled back a little on the sand. The sage octopus said that it turns out that the guy is capable of something. He pointed his tentacles at him and said that despite this, the guy is too slow. He wrapped his tentacles around Fang Cheng and thereby immobilized him. He had already decided that he was in a hopeless situation. The octopus's face contorted disgustingly in a smug mockery. He said that the pathetic little man had been caught. Strange crunching sounds were heard. The sage octopus said that he had destroyed the blades that the guy was so proud of and mockingly asked what he was going to do next. The blades were torn from the guy's hands and pulled behind his back by tentacles. He also spread his legs wide apart to further hinder his ability to escape. The octopus sage spread his arms to the sides with its tentacles, which made Fang Cheng even more helpless. He tried to stick his hand out from under the monster's tentacles and looked at her. He was confused because he felt that he would not be able to recreate the blades for some time. The octopus sage lifted Fang Cheng's heavy demonic body into the air with his limbs before throwing it back. He shouted that weaklings only deserve death and that is the reality. Fang Cheng flew towards a small hill made of sand and building materials. After hitting the surface, he squatted down and began to think. The octopus sage turned out to be much smarter than the blade he fought. This demon was more cautious, so it only fights at medium distances. Fang Cheng began to examine him from afar, not in a hurry to attack mindlessly. He thought about his plan. He decided that first he needed to find his weak point, and then get close and kill him. At this time, the sage octopus began to swing his huge scythe. He angrily asked why Fang Cheng didn't attack him and where did all his confidence go. The demon struck the ground with his heavy scythe, shaking it. If Fang Cheng had not reacted in time and jumped away, he would also have been hit by the shock wave. Fragments of earth scattered in all directions. Fang Cheng concentrated and began to examine the sage octopus for weak points, after which he noticed his huge eye with dark capillaries inside. It was the only unprotected part of his body, and perhaps this was his weak point. The guy realized that if he could hit his eye with sand, he would have the opportunity to attack him. He looked back and realized that they had been near the sand mound all this time. The sage octopus walked up to him and cackled smugly. He straightened his shoulders and asked what use his demon form was of any use, and said that he was no match for him anyway. Fang Cheng at this time was preparing to carry out his plan. He kicked with all his might the handful of sand that was at his feet and the sand fell towards the sage octopus. A pile of sand landed directly on the demon's head, including his eye. He growled in pain and began cursing at Fang Cheng. The sage octopus was blinded for a while and he covered his eye with both hands. Fang Cheng came closer to him and began to swing his arms, saying that against demons like the sage octopus, any means would do. He powerfully hit the demon in the solar plexus, causing him to growl even louder in unbearable pain. The sage octopus raised his head up and opened his swollen eye. He screamed about how much pain he was in and that he needed to get rid of this body quickly. Fang Cheng watched his enemy suffer and was surprised that he could separate from his main body. Fang Cheng was able to find a spear nearby and picked it up. He, completely overwhelmed by anger and the desire to kill, swung his weapon and said that he could not escape from it. The guy pierced the head of the octopus sage with a spear, after which he fell to the ground with a groan full of pain. He was lying on the ground, but was still conscious and not dead. He thought that Fang Cheng, fortunately, did not damage his brain that much. He just needed to pretend to be dead and recover a little. He promised that he would finish off this stupid little man as soon as he turned his back on him. Fang Cheng understood that he could not let his guard down in front of this cunning octopus, and needed to check whether he was really dead. He approached him from behind, holding another spear. The sage octopus heard his steps and tensed, looking in his direction with his only eye. Fang Cheng managed to recover his blade arms, and he cut them all over the octopus's body, causing it to start screaming. Several new system windows have appeared, you killed the octopus sage. You have received a new tentacle ability. A demonic black tentacle with shades of red began to crawl out of the guy's left hand, which wriggled chaotically. He looked at it slightly suspiciously and thought it was a strange ability, but they stretched very well and could be used during mid-range battles and as a rope if needed. A new system window has appeared, the lust for killing has disappeared, so you have returned to your human form. The demon's shell began to crack and disappear, the guy grabbed his head and sighed in confusion. 
the entire demon shell evaporated into a dark aura and Fang Cheng then grabbed his hands. He was in great pain because his demon slayer form had not restored his body this time. He wiped away the drops of blood that came from his mouth with his hand. Although the victory was very difficult for him, he was still able to defeat the Octopus Sage, a D-rank demon. The guy suggested that he was worth much more than ordinary man-eating octopuses. People on the street looked in surprise and asked what it was, and another person began to feel sick from this sight right on the road. This was their reaction to Fang Cheng, who tied all the octopuses, including the main one, with ropes and tied them to his body. He was covered from head to toe with corpses of demons and could hardly walk. He realized that he should not have saved on transport because the body of the sage octopus is very heavy. Fang Chen walked along an alley with trees that led him to the desired building. If you read everything correctly, then this place is the union of hunters, where people are paid for the demons they kill. Fang Cheng stood in front of a giant skyscraper with many windows, and at the entrance stood two tall statues of people holding swords, and they were dressed in robes with hoods. There were two people standing at the door to the building. Dongju City Hunters Union Office. Fang Cheng entered the building and arrived at the waiting area. There were many people around, somewhere lay the bodies of the killed demons that they had brought. There was a small line at the check-in counter. Fang Cheng looked around and thought that it was very crowded here and among the crowd there were many experienced hunters who earned their living by killing demons. Behind the guy stood two guards in black uniforms and dark glasses. They looked at Fang Cheng with disdain and discussed that on his back was the head of a D-rank demon, Octopus Sage. They discussed this loudly enough for Fang Cheng to hear them and pay attention to them. He looked around and realized that they were hunter union inspectors, but he wondered why they were looking at him like that. Fang Cheng tensed and pursed his lips. He turned to them, after which they rudely asked if he really thought they would believe that some newbie and student could defeat a D-rank demon. The second inspector folded his arms across his chest with displeasure and said that most likely the guy simply stole someone else's loot. Fang Cheng looked up at them. He was very offended by the inspector's words and displeasedly asked why they did not believe that a student could defeat such a demon. The inspectors made a menacing face and said that since he was so confident in himself, then let him prove it and show his hunter's ID. He didn't answer them and looked at them with his frowning eyes. Fang Cheng thought that according to the rules of the hunter's union, inspectors do not have the right to demand a hunter's ID. It was obvious to him that these guys just wanted to take away his honestly mined demons. The inspectors shouted that the guy had panicked and pounced on him in order to take his loot. Fang Cheng reacted in time and jumped away from them, which they did not expect. People behind him noticed the noise and shouted that someone was fighting there. Fang Cheng tensed and frowned. He was not going to give the inspectors what he had obtained himself. A man in the crowd with a scar on his face grinned and thought that this guy deserves praise for being able to outrun two big guys with such a load on his back. He understood that this guy was not so simple. The man had green eyes, blonde hair and beard, and wore a hat and a large jacket. The bald inspector turned to Fang Cheng and rudely asked how he dared to run away from them. Fang Cheng was on full alert and ready to defend against their attacks. He easily stopped the bald inspector's fist, which was about to hit him. Fang Cheng didn't even move a muscle on his face. He punched the inspector in the face in response, causing him to fall to the floor. A second inspector came up behind him and was about to quietly knock him out with a blow to the head. But Fang Cheng did not miss this either. He ducked, then grabbed the inspector by the torso and threw the man to his colleague on the floor. People watching the short fight began to be surprised at the guy's excellent skills. Someone said that he would definitely have trouble later. The inspectors, lying tiredly on the floor, groaned in pain. Suddenly, a man came out of the crowd and noted that Fang Cheng was not so simple. He shouted that the battle was over. Fang Cheng turned to him and began to listen. This man turned out to be the vice president of the hunter union named Zhu Tai. He smiled, adjusted his hat and said that he saw everything. He added that although this guy is young, he definitely has the strength to defeat a D-rank demon. The inspectors got up from the floor and walked towards Zhu Tai. The bald man began to complain and said that this guy was the first to attack them, after which he began to tearfully ask them to deal with him. The second inspector supported him and said that the guy did not respect the union of hunters at all. Zhu Tai himself listened to them with a disapproving look. Fang Cheng didn't know what to expect next. He silently watched their showdown. Zhu Tai sighed dissatisfiedly, closed his eyes and told them that they were just blind people who could not realize the strength of the enemy. He asked how they dare to make claims against him after they themselves attacked the guy. The bald inspector with a guilty face tried to object to something, 
but Zhu Tai looked at them menacingly and said that he would not accept any objections, and they were fired since the hunter union did not need such fools. Two now former inspectors began to sob and try to say something to the vice president, but he no longer listened to them and did not pay any attention. Zhu Tai walked up to Fang Cheng and smiled. He said that the guy was not bad at all and asked what power he had awakened. Fang Cheng looked at him, not knowing what to answer. He looked down and said that he had not yet awakened his power. The guy decided to lie, because he couldn't let anyone find out about his demonic form. The crowd of hunters that were around them heard this statement and gasped in surprise. They asked how it happened that he had not yet awakened his power, because without any power he would not have been able to defeat those big guys. A girl from the crowd said that this was impossible and the guy was clearly hiding something. Zhu Tai smiled contentedly. He put his hand on Fang Cheng's shoulder and said that he believed him. Fang Cheng was a little confused by such kindness, because he expected the worst. They walked together towards the office. Zhu Tai said that he would take the guy to where he would be given a reward. Fang Cheng thanked the vice president a little modestly and embarrassedly. In the crowd, everyone immediately began to whisper that this guy was personally received by Vice President Zhu Tai. They entered the office, and Fang Cheng placed the sage octopus on the table. The rest were taken from him by telepathy by the girl sitting on the table. She said that her name was Zio Nan and in the hunter union she was in charge of distributing rewards to hunters. She was wearing a grey skirt suit and a white shirt. The girl wore glasses and had blue hair tied in a high ponytail. Fang Cheng looked at her in surprise. He realized that she had the ability to telekinesis because she carried the corpses of demons so easily. Vice President Zhu Tai smiled at him and said that from now on, if he wants to bring a couple more demon corpses, he won't have to wait in line and can directly contact Zio Nan. He grinned and pointed his thumb at her, saying that she was still single, so the guy could hit on her. Zio Nan was very embarrassed and confused, after which she asked Zhu Tai not to joke like that anymore. Fang Cheng awkwardly straightened the hair on his head and lowered his gaze. He thanked Zhu Tai and said that he did not understand why he welcomed him so warmly, since he was just a student with no special abilities. Zhu Tai replied that he accepted it because they were similar in some ways. Fang Cheng looked up at him and looked questioningly. The vice president winked at him and smiled widely. He said that he also never awakened any power, but he did not give up and continued to improve his body. It was only through hard work and countless hours of weapon training that he was able to surpass most hunters with abilities. Fang Cheng was shocked by what he heard. He couldn't even believe that Zhu Tai was able to become the vice president of the hunter union just through his hard work, even without awakening his powers. Zio Nan handed Fang Cheng a bank card and said that the reward for the octopus sage was 100,000 yuan. For the 10 E-class demons he would receive 30,000 yuan. In addition, he was entitled to 10,000 yuan as a bonus, a total of 140,000. The money has already been transferred to his card. Fang Cheng was shocked. He thanked her and looked at the bank card with sparkling eyes. This was the first time he had held so much money in his hands. Zhu Tai crossed his arms and said that he saw him fight today. The guy lacked experience, so he told Fang Cheng to find him the next time he came here and he would teach him a few tricks. Fang Cheng smiled at him and thanked him again. Zio Nan stood at her desk and watched them. She said that it was kind of boring, because all men do is fight and train. She noticed that Fang Cheng was quite handsome, and she wondered what kind of girls he liked. Fang Cheng lowered his gaze and thought. Zhu Tai was a very strong hunter, and the guy could not miss the opportunity to learn something from him. He looked contentedly at the bank card and thought that first of all he needed to quickly return home and tell her that her brother, in whom she believed so much, had finally started earning money. It was already evening outside and thousands of stars appeared in the sky. Lights slowly began to come on in the windows of the buildings. Fang Cheng was walking home along a crowded street. He crossed the road at a pedestrian crossing. He seemed lost in thought. The guy took a bank card out of his pocket and looked at it again with a look full of joy. This was his first earned money, and Fang Cheng believed that his sister would be very happy when she found out about it. Suddenly he walked past digital billboards showing news. The news was about a demon that had been spotted recently. This demon was the demonic form of Fang Cheng. Many onlookers gathered around the screen, interested in the news. The guy stood up in a stupor and began to listen to the news. The TV presenter began to talk about how a video recently appeared on the internet where two demons clashed in battle, and users called one of them the Demon King. On the TV behind the TV presenter was Fang Cheng in demonic form. He opened his mouth in shock and couldn't believe his eyes. He thought that those guys he drove away during the battle with Blade posted a video of their battle on the internet. And on top of that, it was all over the news. The TV presenter continued her broadcast. 
To find out more about this incident, their correspondent interviewed the deputy head of the demon hunting division named Dulan, also known as Lone Wolf. It turned out to be a man who was exploring the site of the battle between Blade and Fang Cheng. He was giving a press conference in a hall with many spectators. Du Lan said that demons would never help people and asked the townspeople not to be mistaken about him. He looked straight ahead and said that they, the demon hunting department, would try to catch this demon king as soon as possible. He promised to find and kill him. Du Lan held a photo of Fang Cheng in demonic form in his hands, and after he finished speaking, the man tore it in half. The guy was horrified by these words. He looked gloomily at the screen, not knowing what to do next. People began to discuss this news. The guy in the hat said that he heard that this demon king fought with another demon to save people. His friend told him that he was talking nonsense and said that demons do not save people. The third person told them that if this demon really helps people, then he should be called a hero and not the demon king. Fang Chen heard their conversation and became tense. He did not think that his transformation would cause such a public outcry. This popularity did not please Fang Cheng at all. It is impossible for anyone to find out about his identity, otherwise he and his elder sister will end up in big trouble. He reached the suburb of Dongzhu, where there were many unremarkable houses close to each other. Fang Cheng returned home. He entered the apartment and shouted about it, she smiled widely. He asked what she was cooking, because the house smelled very tasty. His older sister came out to meet him and was glad to see him back, because she was very worried. Fang Cheng was embarrassed and asked what was the reason for her worry. She took out her smartphone with a picture of Fang Cheng's demonic form and fearfully said that she saw a video about the demon king on the internet, and advised Fang Cheng to be careful on the street. Fang Cheng sighed wearily and looked at her. He couldn't believe that even she found out about it. The guy took his older sister's hand and smiled at her. He asked her not to worry, because it was just a video on the internet. After that, Fang Cheng took out a bank card from his pocket and proudly said that her brother was able to earn 140,000 yuan today. She asked in surprise about the amount. He smiled confidently and said that he earned this money by hunting demons, because during these years of training he had become much stronger and could now hunt demons. His older sister smiled happily and asked with hope in her voice if he had awakened his power. Fang Cheng scratched his head a little confused and embarrassed and did not give her a direct answer. She looked at him worriedly and asked if he was injured, since hunting demons is a dangerous activity. She thought that she couldn't even imagine what Fang Cheng had to go through. He gave her the bank card and said that he would be fine and that she could take the money. She quietly and hesitantly said that this money would be used to pay off debts, because after the death of their parents they often had to borrow from relatives. Fang Cheng's gaze became serious and cold, and he asked if she knew which demon killed their parents. The girl sadly lowered her gaze and said that it remained a mystery even to her. According to official data, they were killed by a demon engulfed in flames, but he disappeared without a trace immediately after committing those atrocities. Then the entire street was engulfed in flames that raged fiercely. People were burning alive there, and there were only ruins around. That was all his older sister knew. He listened to her with a slightly thoughtful look. The guy inside himself suggested that this was not an ordinary demon. He looked forward resolutely and clenched his fist, promising himself to deal with this demon as soon as he became strong enough. Zhu Tai was quite an experienced hunter, he must know something about this demon. Fang Cheng decided to visit him later and inquire about it. Suddenly she took his face in her palm. She smiled a little sadly and said that they are not strong enough to think about revenge. They can only live a happy life together. Fang Cheng was embarrassed by this gesture and looked away, blushing deeply. He said he knew about all this. The next day, in the morning, Fang Cheng went to the Dongju City Hunter Academy. The weather was great outside. The guy was late for class and ran as fast as he could. He was so focused on money yesterday that he forgot about his studies. The guy ran so fast along the corridor of the academy that the wind even lifted one of the girl's skirts. He turned around awkwardly, looking at her. Fang Cheng entered the office and heard what his classmates were talking about. One of them said that recently everyone has been talking about the Demon King. The second one agreed with him and said that he was even shown on the news, noting that this demon looked very cool. Another classmate asked if someone who saves people could be called a demon. Fang Chen tiredly sat down in his seat and sighed. Even his classmates knew about it and it was tiring. Fang Chen thought that he was really not a demon. Wang Yu came up to him and said that he had changed. Fang Chen noticed her and turned his head in his direction. She crossed her arms and said that she looked much stronger than the day he was attacked by the bullies. He laughed awkwardly and said that she most likely just imagined it. Fang Cheng was surprised that her intuition was so strong. Behind them, the hooligans led by Chen Tianyu, who was eating something from his plate, approached them. 
he tisked and sarcastically said that the lovebirds are chatting early in the morning. His friends immediately laughed. Long Yu turned her attention to them with displeasure. She looked at them sullenly and began to summon the power of the wind in her hand, saying that she had been too gentle with them last time. Fang Cheng stood in front of her with a satisfied grin and said that there was no need to pay attention to Chen Tianyu. She asked what was the matter. Fang Cheng said that Chen Tianyu was just a barking dog, which made the bully very angry. He immediately stopped eating his breakfast. Chen Tianyu looked at him with a mad and angry look and said that Fang Cheng seemed to really want to die. He activated his ability and threw his bowl of noodles at the guy, saying that he would beat him up even when Long Yu was here. The plate rushed towards Fang Cheng with lightning speed, but he put his hand forward and deftly caught it. The guy shouted that this had been going on for three years. He ran up and slammed Chen Tianyu's face right into the plate, dousing it with noodles and broth. Fang Cheng shouted that he would not allow him to continue to bully himself. He pushed Chen Tianyu away from him, causing him to fly backwards. The bully got angry and hit the floor with his hand. He rudely asked if Fang Cheng had become insolent. Chen Tianyu stood up from the floor and began swinging his arms as he ran towards Fang Cheng. He shouted that he was just a loser and asked when he managed to become so bold. Fang Cheng deftly dodged the bully's attack and he missed. He did not expect this because he believed that Fang Cheng, like last time, would stand still and endure the beatings. Fang Cheng looked arrogantly at Chen Tianyu and asked, Is this all he can do? Chen Tianyu turned in his direction, clenching his teeth in anger, his pupils constricted. However, a second later, Fang Cheng grabbed him by the shoulder and kneed him directly in the stomach, causing him to start coughing. After that, he flew straight into the wall under the shocked looks of their classmates. The beaten Chen Tianyu was covered in scratches and bleeding from his mouth. He asked how Fang Chen got such strength and reflexes. Fang Chen came closer and stood directly in front of him. He said that things were different now, and before he started to bully someone, he should have thought about the day when he would have to pay for it. A crowd of classmates immediately appeared behind him and began commenting on what had happened. Some wondered if this was really the same Fang Cheng. Some were shocked that he defeated the bully single-handedly, and some just laughed and grabbed Fang Cheng. They waited for the fight to continue while Fang Cheng looked at the beaten Chen Tianyu, who could not even stand up. Wang Yu also watched their fight and was deeply surprised. She was confused because if she thought rationally, even with all of Fang Cheng's efforts and training, he would not be able to progress so quickly to defeat Chen Tianyu. She walked towards Fang Cheng and put her fist to her chin. The girl began to think that his movements were too fast and strong for an ordinary person and asked herself if he had awakened some kind of body strengthening ability. Suddenly a man's voice was heard, ordering everything to stop. Wang Yu and Fang Cheng turned around at his voice. It was a teacher at the Hunter Academy, a middle-aged man with dark hair and glasses. He said that today the academy would be testing for demons and then ordered everyone to follow him. The students were very surprised by this and began to panic. They asked if they would actually have to fight real demons. Chen Tianyu got up from the floor with the help of his friends, who lifted him up. He told Fang Cheng that he was not finished with him yet. Fang Cheng himself only threw an indifferent glance in his direction and remained silent. Chen Tianyu, with a distraught face, shouted that he had simply relaxed too much this time and would deal with him next time. Fang Cheng was still silent, even though these words angered him. He understood that Chen Tianyu was an unpredictable and vicious guy. He should not let his guard down around him. Fang Cheng will have to deal with him as soon as the opportunity arises. The students arrived at the back gate of the Hunter Academy. Outside the gates there was a view of magnificent mountains, at the foot of which there was a dense forest. A wide path led to it. The blue gates themselves were quite high and had drawings in the shape of clouds on them. There were two guards at the gate, and in front of the crowd of students stood a teacher giving instructions. He asked to listen to him carefully. The teacher said quite loudly that there was very little time left before the final exam, and the academy decided that the demon hunting test would properly stimulate their growth. Besides, it was their chance to improve their grades. The teacher walked closer to the gate and stood between two muscular guards. He said that once the students went outside the hunter academy, they would meet rank F grass demons. If they could kill even one, they would be able to absorb the essence of the vegetation which would help them become stronger. As soon as the teacher finished, the students immediately began talking among themselves. The guy with dark hair said that rank F demons are not much different from ordinary beasts, and he can kill at least 10 of them. The student with long hair proudly said that this test was too easy. Chen Tianyu smirked confidently, crossed his arms and told the others not to touch his demons. Long Yu stood next to Fang Cheng and asked what he thought about this demon hunt. Fang Cheng was focused, 
he said that the danger here is not the demons themselves, but the students who will compete with each other, and they need to be careful. The teacher drew attention to himself and loudly announced that the gate was opening and asked everyone to get ready. Two guards began to open the heavy, tall gate that opened the passage into the forest with demons. Chen Tianyu and his cronies immediately ran there, saying that they would be the first to take all the essences. All the other students slowly entered through the gate. In the forest, on the damp ground, lay bones and a human skull. Fang Cheng reached out to them and began to examine the bone in his hand. Wang Yu, who was standing behind him, asked what he wanted to see in the bones of the dead man. Fang Cheng replied that he did not expect that the grass demons would be so strong as to kill a person. Fang Cheng heard the noise and tensed up. He shouted that someone was approaching them. Wang Yu turned her head towards the noise and saw demons moving towards them. She thought that this could not be possible and did not understand why they appeared so quickly. Grass demons resembled huge grasshoppers and mantises, but they also had green wings on their backs. Grass demons surrounded the couple from all sides, taking positions both on the ground and in the trees. Long Yu began to activate her wind powers and ordered Fang Cheng to hide behind her, because he could not cope with so many demons. They stood with him back to back. The guy rushed to attack, saying that everything was fine and he could handle it. This greatly surprised the girl. Fang Cheng was able to defeat several grass demons at once with one blow, breaking off their chitinous layers and breaking their limbs. He noticed several more creatures behind him approaching them. The demons headed towards Long Yu, preparing to attack her, but the girl did not notice this. Fang Cheng instantly ran up to them, killing them with one blow. He told the girl not to forget about her back. Long Yu was shocked by what she saw. She couldn't believe that this was really the same Fang Cheng she knew. The guy rushed from side to side, killing demons with ease, without making any effort. Remains of demons were flying around. Fang Cheng stopped for a second and noticed that the grass demons were noticeably weaker than those he had already fought. The girl stood in a stupor and watched this. She worriedly asked how he became so strong in just a couple of days and said that he didn't look like himself at all. Fang Cheng walked past her with a slight smile on his face and said that all people change over time and suggested that they begin collecting the herbal demon essence. The essence rose into the air in green drops, floating straight into their hands. Suddenly Long Yu heard some noise and asked what was going on. She saw that on the right two students were running and shouting that there was a huge demon there. Long Yu began to flex her fists and said with a serious face that it was her turn to attack, although she did not think that there were other demons living here. Fang Cheng looked anxiously at what was approaching them and said that this was not an ordinary demon. A huge demon, reminiscent of a tree without a crown, was running towards them. His body resembled that of a human, but he was entirely made of wood. Fang Cheng looked at it in panic and realized that it was a D-rank wood demon. He clenched his teeth and opened his eyes wide. The tree demon began to head towards them, baring its teeth ominously. Long Yu asked why a D-rank demon showed up at the E-rank demon training ground. Fang Cheng confidently said that now is not the time to think about it, and they had better stay away from this demon. He placed his hand on her shoulder, which made Long Yu feel embarrassed and blush deeply. She thought about the first time Fang Cheng touched her. Chen Tianyu came out of the forest towards them with a crazy look. His friends walked nearby. They had some kind of weapon in their hands. He laughed and said that he was sure that the cowardly Long Yu and Fang Cheng would try to escape. They came out to them, holding wooden spears in their hands. Chen Tianyu said that a true demon hunter must be willing to face death. Fang Cheng let out a quiet chuckle as he looked at them, and Long Yu asked if he hit Chen Tianyu's head too hard last time. Chen Tianyu and his team quickly stood in front of the couple, preparing to kill the wood demon. The demon grinned angrily and exhaled smoke, looking at Chen Tianyu, who confidently said that today he would show these losers what he was capable of by killing this demon with his own hands. Inside, he was thinking that after this, Long Yu would understand how strong he was and would forget about this loser Fang Cheng. The rest of the students hid behind trees and rocks, quietly watching the upcoming battle. The disciple asked whether Chen Tianyu was really capable of killing this giant. A frightened girl poked her head out from behind a tree and said that it was a D-rank demon. The disciple with a small beard said that Chen Tianyu was so confident in himself that he easily went against the wood demon. The guy in the hat said that maybe he could actually beat him. Chen Tianyu charged the wooden spear with his power, after which it was covered with red lightning. He ran screaming towards the demon and said that it was no different from the grass demons, except for its size. He tried to thrust the end of his spear into the wood demon's chest, but he easily stopped it with his hand. He grabbed Chen Tianyu with it and growled angrily while looking at him. Chen Tianyu was scared because he didn't expect that he would be stopped. 
the demon unclenched his fist with Chen Tianyu, after which the guy fell to the ground with his back down. His henchmen immediately ran up to him, fear clearly visible on their faces. Chen Tianyu, all crippled, ordered them to help him immediately. However, they did not have time. The demon swung his leg and then kicked it at all three bullies, knocking them aside. Fang Cheng and Long Yu watched the clearly unequal battle. The girl said that although Chen Tianyu is able to compete with a crowd of grass demons, he cannot cope with the wood demon. The guy told her that it was difficult to compensate for the difference in ranks. The tree demon grinned contentedly as he looked at the beaten Chen Tianyu, who lamented that he had failed again. Fang Cheng and Long Yu ran towards him together. The girl invited him to deal with this demon together because they could get a lot of materials from him. The guy agreed with her and said that a D-rank demon was too tasty a prey to simply ignore. The tree demon noticed them and glared at them. The hiding students began to panic. The guy with dark hair was surprised that now Fang Cheng and Long Yu decided to attack the demon, and the other student ran towards the forest, saying that they needed to call the teacher quickly. The guy in the hat tried to call out to him, but he didn't succeed. Chen Tianyu's henchmen tried to drag him away from the battlefield, suggesting that he get out of here due to the fact that they could not cope with the wood demon. Chen Tianyu desperately resisted and tried to break free from their grip, ordering them to let him go. He shouted that he would rather die than be saved by Fang Cheng and Long Yu. The girl used her wind power to hit the demon. He put his hands in front of his face, blocking the attack, before removing them and grinning smugly at her. Long Yu looked at him with concern and was surprised that her wind power didn't even scratch him. Fang Cheng examined the monster, planning an attack tactic. This demon's body is covered in hard wood armor, and they won't be able to hurt it until they find its weak spot. The demon raised his hands up, forming them into a fist, and then slammed them onto the ground. A lot of branches and twigs immediately began to come out from there, which could become a trap for them. Fang Cheng found himself between two such branches, having difficulty stopping them. His pupils constricted and his eyes opened wide. He knew that he could not defeat him without his transformation, but he should not turn into a demon in front of Long Yu. The girl jumped over the intertwining branches of the demon, after which she turned around and looked at him. Her strength was clearly above Ranky, yet she was unable to even scratch her. The demon smiled ominously. Fang Chen grabbed her and ran in the other direction, saying that they had no time to waste, and told Long Yu to run away first. The tree demon once again released many branches, making it difficult to finish it off and escape. Fang Cheng pushed the girl outside the demon branches and ordered her to run and not look back, and he would take care of the rest. The girl was shocked, because she did not want to leave him alone with such a strong demon. The branches gradually began to turn into tree pillars, behind which the face of Long Yu disappeared, who called Fang Cheng by name. Soon, a fence formed around the demon and Fang Cheng, which summoned the wood demon. Long Yu remained outside. She began to use her wind power, saying that she would destroy these thickets and pull Fang Cheng out of there. The tree demon roared aggressively, preparing to kill Fang Cheng who was standing at his feet. He gradually began to transform into a demon and thought that he needed to deal with this demon before Long Yu broke through the thicket. The evil demon began to swing his fist, aiming directly at the guy, but at that moment he was already completing his transformation into a demon. Fang Cheng cut off his wooden arm with his blade arms. The effectiveness of the blades is simply amazing. After cutting off the wood demon's arm, Fang Cheng jumped behind him. The demon growled, causing a green aura to appear around the stump of his forearm. He used regeneration and a new arm grew within seconds. Fang Cheng turned around and looked in horror as the hand he had just cut off was restored. He ran towards him, preparing to attack him again because he couldn't be given time to recover. The guy came face to face with him, then jumped up and cut him with his blade. The demon looked at the wound and it turned out to be quite minor. The monster again took root underground, and from there grew dozens of sharp branches that stretched towards Fang Cheng. The guy jumped away from them, avoiding the attack. He froze in the air for a second and realized that now was the best time to counterattack, because after this attack with branches he slowed down for a short time. He decided to try the tentacles he inherited from his previous D-rank demon. Black tentacles began to appear from his hands, with blades at the ends. He decided to combine these abilities in order to deal with the wood demon as quickly as possible. The tentacles began to move towards him. The monster noticed this and was even a little taken aback. Fang Cheng broke through the thick tree trunks that protected the wood demon. A second later, all the barriers were passed, and Fang Cheng launched tentacles with blades directly into the wood demon's body breaking through its armor protection. The monster screamed in horror, after which it turned into a mountain of splinters. The tentacles and blades began to disappear, and Fang Cheng realized that this demon was finished. Several system windows appeared, you killed the wood demon. 
You have gained the Summon Tree Thorns ability. You have gained the additional ability regeneration. Fang Cheng's demonic form began to disappear as soon as he dealt with the demon. Fang Cheng did not expect to get two abilities from one demon. He turned around and looked at the splinters left by the wood demon. His essence was there. Fang Cheng walked up to her and began to suck her through his hand. It was a high-quality essence, just what the guy needed. Perhaps she will be the one who will help awaken his true strength. To his right he heard some noise and rumble, which frightened him because of the surprise. It was Long Yu who broke through the trees using the power of the wind. She asked Fang Cheng to wait a little longer as she would help him soon. Imagine her surprise when she did not see any wood demon. She asked Fang Cheng in shock if he had really mastered it. The guy awkwardly scratched his head, smiling at her. He looked at his hands and said that he apparently awakened the power that strengthened his body, so he became much stronger. He added that the wood demon underestimated him too much, so he was able to catch him in his mistake and kill him. Long Yu looked at him worriedly and frowned. She said that the guy had just recently been an ordinary person and she couldn't believe that in such a short time he had become so strong. Fang Cheng walked up to her and smiled. He said that it was just a D-rank demon and they weren't as strong as she thought. According to the guy, there are rank or even S-rank demons roaming the world right now, and they are not even close to them. Long Yu believed his words and calmed down a little. She agreed with the guy and said that she should expand her horizons and suggested getting out of the forest. It was already the end of the test, and the teacher said in front of a crowd of students that today he would like to celebrate the successes of head boy Long Yu and Fang Cheng. They stood next to him. The man hugged them and laughed, after which he said that they had exceeded all expectations by defeating the wood demon. Wang Yu and Fang Cheng looked at each other displeasedly, feeling uncomfortable. The students began to be indignant. The purple-haired guy said that he didn't believe that Fang Cheng could seriously help Long Yu in the fight against the wood demon. The guy in the hat agreed with him and shouted that Fang Cheng was probably just standing on the sidelines and waiting for the headman to deal with him herself. The girl folded her arms across her chest with displeasure and asked what was the point of words of praise if there was no reward. The embittered Chen Tianyu began to roll up his sleeves and thought that Fang Cheng was not worthy of this and it was Chen Tianyu who should have killed the demon. A man in a formal suit approached the teacher and Fang Cheng and asked if Fang Cheng was studying in this class because someone was looking for him. The teacher was surprised by this. Fang Cheng was a little confused, because he didn't even know who else might be looking for him except his sister. He had some kind of bad feeling. Du Lan was smoking in the schoolyard when his subordinate approached him and said that they had found Fang Cheng. The man turned his head and saw Fang Cheng heading towards him. As soon as Fang Cheng saw Du Lan, he realized that this was the same man who was shown on the news. He was the deputy of the demon hunting department. He began to fear that they had somehow found out about his transformation. Fang Cheng decided that it didn't matter and there was no use worrying about it now. He clenched his fists so tightly that they began to tremble from tension. Fang Cheng didn't understand what was wrong with his transformation, because he was trying to maintain his humanity. Du Lan threw the cigarette on the ground and said that he came quite quickly and asked if he was Fang Cheng. The guy smiled at him and confirmed that it was him. He asked if he could inquire about how he could be of use to the demon hunting department. The man looked at him coldly with his one eye and said that one of the witnesses told them that four days ago, some young man saved a little girl from the blade demon. Du Lan came closer to the guy and stated that they had conducted investigations and found out that this young man was Fang Cheng. These words made the guy tense, but he decided to pretend that he had nothing to do with it. He laughed artificially and rubbed the back of his head, after which he said that he had done nothing like that because at the academy they prepare for this every day. Du Lan shouted that this was not the case. He looked piercingly at the guy and stated that right after he saved the girl, the demon king appeared and killed Blade. Du Lan's words made Fang Cheng believe that he had been exposed. He didn't know what to do next. The guy decided that he would pretend until the end that it wasn't him. Du Lan looked at the guy gloomily. Fang Cheng smiled as naturally as he could and said that this demon king was often talked about on TV. While Du Lan and Fang Cheng were having a dialogue, Long Yu sneaked up on them. She hid around the corner and tried to figure out what the demon hunter division even wanted from Fang Cheng. The wind blew Du Lan's white hair. He said that judging by the time and surveillance cameras, there was a 100% chance that he would have encountered this demon. He asked Fang Cheng to tell us more about this. These words made the guy confused. He urgently needed to come up with something. He was silent for a while, but then looked down and said that he had indeed met this demon. Fang Chen calmly said that the blade demon had seriously injured him when he tried to save that girl, and at that moment the demon king showed up. According to him, a couple of moments later he attacked Blade, and a fierce battle between two demons began, while Fang Cheng simply watched it. 
The guy prayed that his lie would not be recognized. Du Lan took out a cigarette and lit it with a lighter. The man asked where the demon went after he dealt with Blade. Fang Chen calmly looked at him and replied that he, frankly, did not even know where exactly the demon had gone. But almost immediately after his victory he disappeared. Du Lan looked at him coldly and said not to fool him. He checked all the surveillance cameras in the area, and there was no sign of the Demon King anywhere. The man got angry and said that there is only one explanation for this. The Demon King never left and he merged with Fang Cheng into one. The man raised his index and middle fingers, activating his powers. Fang Cheng's face was both shocked and disappointed. The next second, a portal appeared above his head, from which a huge bone hand emerged and reached towards him. Fang Cheng didn't expect this and only managed to look up, thinking that it was the power of summoning. The bone hand grabbed him tightly, preventing the guy from escaping. Fang Cheng realized that Du Lan's strength was bordering on that of an A-rank and there was no way he would be able to escape from his grip. A frightened Long Yu came out of hiding and called out Fang Cheng's name. Du Lan, without even looking in her direction, blocked her path with his second bone hand. He pointed his finger at her and ordered her to stop now, because no one has the right to interfere in the affairs of the demon hunting department. The girl frowned and realized that the difference between them was too great. Apparently, the bone hands repeated the gestures that their owner showed with his own hands. Fang Cheng desperately asked Du Lan to believe him, because he did not merge with this demon. Du Lan responded to his requests that it was hard to believe his words when the facts said the opposite. He reached for the cigarette that was in his mouth and said that if he really wanted to prove his innocence, then he should not resist, because he would find out everything himself. The men threw the cigarette on the ground, and Du Lan's words scared the guy. The man pointed his other hand towards Fang Cheng's chest and began to figure out something using his aura. Fang Cheng gritted his teeth, expecting the worst. He thought that if Du Lan found out about his secret and realized that he had indeed merged with a demon, he would be captured for terrible experiments. He also assumed the second option, where he would kill the guy on the spot. An aura began to hover around the guy's chest, seeping into him. Fang Cheng seemed to lose his breath and let out a muffled groan. Du Lan's eyes opened wide, his pupils constricted. What he found out was not at all what he expected. The man removed his hand and looked at Fang Cheng in shock. He did not find a single drop of demonic energy in the guy. The completely ordinary energy of an awakened hunter circulated in him. Du Lan said with a guilty look that he was still mistaken this time. He relaxed his hands and then said that the guy was free. The bony hands released the guy from their grip. He was angry and unhappy, trying to catch his breath. Long Yu looked after Du Lan with displeasure and asked Fang Cheng if this Cyclops would really just leave here after what he did to the guy. Fang Cheng, still recovering his breath, asked her to leave the man. Du Lan stopped, still standing with his back to them. He said that he remembered Fang Cheng, and something tells him that this will not be the last time they meet. Fang Cheng breathed heavily and said that he hoped that they would never see each other again. He looked down, sighed wearily, and thought that he had somehow managed to hide the existence of his inner demon. If he did find out about this, Fang Cheng would definitely be in trouble. Long Yu ran up to him and asked if he was okay. He smiled at her and said that everything was fine and they would hope that the demon hunting department would no longer blame innocent people. Long Yu looked at him sympathetically and said that they somehow had a lot to worry about today. She tilted her head a little and smiled sweetly. The girl suggested going somewhere, because they needed to relax after such a hard day. Fang Cheng was a little embarrassed, as evidenced by the slight blush on his cheeks. He said he wouldn't mind dinner. Inside, he was wondering what it was and whether Long Yu really invited him to have dinner together. Shopping area of Dongju City. Evening came. Stars appeared in the dark blue sky, which were lightly covered with dark clouds. There were quite a lot of people in the area. Fang Cheng and Long Yu walked next to each other, awkwardly looking away from each other. Both had blush on their cheeks. They were no longer wearing school uniforms. Fang Cheng wore a white t-shirt and black jeans, while Long Yu wore a lilac blouse with blue jeans. Fang Cheng stole a glance at Long Yu and wondered why he hadn't noticed that Long Yu was so beautiful before. The girl noticed a couple walking nearby, holding hands. She reached out with her hand to the guy's hand and invited him to hold hands too. They did this and were very embarrassed, both blushed deeply and felt pleasant excitement. Fang Cheng smiled softly and looked at the girl. He sheepishly asked if that meant they were dating now. The girl, just as embarrassed, answered positively. Inside herself, she called Fang Cheng a fool and wondered why he was so straightforward and whether he could have said it more delicately. They walked happily down the street, holding hands and enjoying each other's company. Xiao Nan from the Hunter Union walked toward them and called Fang Cheng by name. Wang Yu didn't understand who she was. The girl asked if they knew Fang Cheng. Xiao Nan, in turn, asked who this girl was walking next to him. 
They both looked at him and waited for an answer. Sayo Nan was a little disappointed. She awkwardly brought her hand to her chest. She thought that Fang Cheng didn't have a girlfriend, and she even planned to invite him to dinner one day. Fang Cheng blushed and replied that it was Long Yu, his classmate. Long Yu grabbed his hand and said that she and Fang Cheng were actually childhood friends. Xiao Nan sighed dissatisfiedly and thought, since they are childhood friends, then her chances of getting close to Fang Cheng are zero. Fang Cheng invited Xiao Nan to have dinner together if she was free, but she said that it was not worth it and she needed to return home as soon as possible. She pretended not to be upset and walked in the other direction. Finally, she turned around and reminded him of the invitation from Vice President Zhu Tai. He was quite serious when he said that he would teach the guy to fight. Fang Cheng smiled awkwardly at her and waved goodbye, saying that he wouldn't forget. He hoped she didn't think anything strange. Long Yu and Fang Cheng watched as Xiao Nan walked away and disappeared into the crowd. The girl pointed her finger at Fang Cheng's stomach and said that he looked like he was upset that she refused. The guy was very embarrassed and blushed deeply. His lips curled. He awkwardly rubbed the back of his head and smiled. He said that he was not upset at all, because from the very beginning he and Long Yu had agreed to have dinner just the two of them. He thought she was jealous of him. The guy took her hand again and said that there was a good restaurant nearby. The girl looked at how their hands were intertwined and blushed very cutely. She exhaled quietly with slightly sad eyes and said that she was tired today. Apparently, she spent too much energy on today's test. Fang Chen crouched down to her and offered to carry her, smiling broadly at her. The girl laughed and said that she wouldn't mind. She pushed off the ground and jumped onto Fang Cheng's shoulders. She said it was quite funny. Fang Cheng almost lost his balance from surprise, but was able to stay on his feet. He looked up and said that what he meant was that he could carry her on his back instead of on his shoulders. She giggled and winked at him, asking what difference it made since he was still carrying it. Besides, he always rolled her like this when they were little. People turned around in surprise at them on the street but they didn't care. Fang Cheng took her hands while he carried her on his shoulders. He said that this really happened often in childhood. Fang Cheng closed his eyes relaxed and chuckled. It was so many years ago. Then little Long Yu also rode on the shoulders of the same little Fang Cheng. She enthusiastically said that it was amazing. Suddenly, a banana peel appeared under the boy's feet, causing him to slip and fall to the ground along with Long Yu. The banana peel then fell directly on his head. The girl cried bitterly, sitting on the ground, because she was in pain. Fang Cheng noticed this and then took out some chocolate from his bag. He asked Long Yu not to cry and said that he had a chocolate in his bag, and if she promised not to cry, then he would share it with her. They were both grimy from the fall, staining their faces and clothes. Long Yu promised him that she wouldn't cry and then smiled at him. Fang Cheng smiled back at her and gently patted her head, saying that she was so cute. Fang Cheng was lost in his memories and thought that he did not even notice how Long Yu managed to grow into a beautiful girl. The smile never left his face. The man on the street looked at them in surprise and probably thought it was strange. Fang Cheng grabbed Long Yu's legs tightly and ran forward, which the girl did not expect, after which she asked him to slow down. They went to a barbecue restaurant for dinner. There were six empty plates on the table on the Fang Cheng side. He sat back contentedly and stroked his stomach, saying that the most delicious meat was prepared here. Wang Yu put her hands under her head and looked at him in confusion. He was completely focused on eating and didn't even say a single word to her. Two men were sitting at the next table. One of them was smoking a cigarette and asked his friend if he had seen the latest news. He said that a burnt female corpse had recently been found on a nearby street. The couple listened to them carefully. The second man responded in shock to the first that he himself had been to that place. Her corpse was suspended from a lamppost, a gruesome sight. The man with the cigarette said that it was not the most pleasant scene, and most importantly, no one knows who did it. Fang Cheng looked down thoughtfully and said that his parents were once burned by a demon, so when he hears about such cases, he begins to feel strange. The girl confidently and firmly invited him to see what happened there. Fang Cheng agreed with her, and they both got up from the table and left the restaurant. He thought that trouble had been following them all day. They approached the crime scene, where a huge number of people had already gathered. The silhouette of a corpse was indeed visible on the lamppost. They came closer and saw the completely burnt body of a young woman. She was missing hair, teeth and eyeballs, and had some kind of mark on her forehead. Someone from the crowd shouted out what kind of madman could do this, and even tie him to a pole. Fang Cheng thought about what could have happened here and told Long Yu that perhaps the killer deliberately left the corpse on public display, because he wanted to incite panic among people. Long Yu looked at the corpse in shock and said that if she was not mistaken, then the mark on the forehead of the corpse belonged to the demonic church. This sign looked like a triangle with an eye inside. 
Long Yu's eyes were wide open. She was stunned by what she saw. Fang Cheng, not understanding anything, asked what kind of demonic church it was. Fang Cheng put on a serious face and said that he had once come across demonic churches on the internet. He heard that this organization was created by the demons themselves. Wang Yu said tensely that everything is correct, and moreover, this church has accounted for the lives of many innocent people. They looked at the burned corpse hanging on the pole. Wang Yu said that the main part of this organization is made up of demons, and after each murder they leave this eye pattern on the body of the victim. Fang Cheng lowered his gaze thoughtfully. His parents were also once burned by a demon and their charred bodies were left on the street. Everything is exactly the same as with this murdered woman. He knew this couldn't just be an accident. It seems he's finally starting to get closer to the truth. While they were standing in the crowd of onlookers, a guy with the same mark on his forehead approached from behind. He was wearing a black sweatshirt with the hood pulled over his head. In his hands he was holding a strange black bag. The guy threw his bag in the middle of the street. Fang Cheng sensed something was wrong and turned around. The bag immediately began to burn. A second later it exploded right in the crowd of townspeople. Fang Chen grabbed Long Yu's hand in fear and told her to be careful. All the people began to run away in panic. Some were not so lucky and were left engulfed in flames. People screamed and tried to save their lives, as well as the lives of their loved ones. The fire after the explosion spread over a large area, causing more people to burn alive. Fang Cheng ran forward in fear, grabbing Long Yu's hand, and she finally turned around anxiously and looked at the fire. People engulfed in flames screamed in pain and horror, choking on carbon monoxide and burning alive. They screamed and asked for help, shouting that they did not want to die. Their skin quickly became charred, and they had no chance of survival. Fang Cheng turned his head to the side and saw the intruder running towards a narrow street, hiding from everyone. He immediately ran after him, angrily saying that he would catch up with the culprit of this hell. Wang Yu didn't have time to say anything to him, but she clearly wanted to stop him. Fang Cheng ran down the same street as the attacker. He almost caught up with him. When the culprit turned around, he did not expect the guy to be so close to him. Fang Cheng grabbed him by the shoulder, trying to stop him, and asked who sent him here. The attacker bared his teeth and frowned, turning around. His skin began to fall away from his face as his body began to become covered in flames. He gave one last nasty grin before he began to burn completely. Fang Cheng watched this spectacle and could not believe his eyes. The culprit of the terror chose to burn himself rather than get caught. Fang Cheng watched the guy's body burn to ashes, and at the same time thought about what this demonic church was. He couldn't even imagine how it was possible to force a person to sacrifice his life so as not to give out information about them. Wang Yu approached Fang Cheng from behind and said that he was just a puppet, and the real culprit was most likely hiding somewhere else. Fang Cheng agreed with her and suggested that they have more similar puppets. Emergency services have already arrived at the scene of the explosion and put out the fire. They helped the victims and carried out the bodies of those who could not survive the attack. The immoral guy took out his phone and with a smile began to say how many corpses there are. He said that we need to film it and post it on the internet. The same nasty guy said that these losers had no chance to survive. He chuckled and said that burnt corpses smelled like barbecue. The girl, who overheard their immoral dialogue, asked how they could even talk about victims in such a way. Directly in front of them lay the burnt body of a little boy. A police officer approached them and rudely told them that this was not a performance for them and ordered them to leave immediately. He asked if they had heard that criminals always returned to the scene of the crime. Fang Cheng and Long Yu returned to the scene of the tragedy. They looked at the intelligence agencies, and Fang Cheng said that, fortunately, help arrived quite quickly. He put his hand on Long Yu's shoulder and said that he would go to the Hunter Union tomorrow and ask the vice head of Zhu Tai about this, because he should know something about such cases. Fang Cheng asked if the girl could give him time off from class tomorrow. She looked at him incredulously, but agreed to help him. She couldn't believe that Fang Cheng really wanted to get to the bottom of the truth, because it was too dangerous. It is not for nothing that the demonic church is considered one of the most powerful terrorist organizations. Hunter's Union of Dongju City Fang Cheng arrived at the high-rise building in the morning. He and Zhu Tai were sparring in the training room. Zhu Tai praised him and said that he was not bad for a beginner. Fang Cheng was punching his body at this time. Zhu Tai threw a left jab, which Fang Cheng ducked under, thereby avoiding the attack. Zhu Tai smiled smugly and gave the guy advice. When dodging a left jab, he should be prepared for a sneaky right hand strike. The man was just swinging it. It hit the guy right in the solar plexus, which he was completely unprepared for. The vice chief said that in war all means are good. Fang Cheng admitted his loss. Zhu Tai drank soda in a can and handed the same to the guy, after which he asked why he was so disorganized today. 
he assumed that something was bothering the guy. Fang Cheng sat on the floor and rested after training. He took the soda and opened it, then asked Zhu Tai if he knew anything about the explosion incident yesterday. The man finished his soda and said that he was aware of him. He said that judging by the way it was done, this was the work of the Lord of Fire, who five years ago turned their city into a real inferno. These words seemed to echo in Fang Cheng's head. His pupils constricted. He seriously asked the vice head of Zhu Tai to tell him about this fire lord. The man did not expect such a reaction and was taken aback, asking what was the matter. Anger boiled inside the guy. He gritted his teeth and clenched the metal soda can in his hands. He shouted that his parents died five years ago at the hands of this demon, and said that if he did not avenge them, he would never forgive himself. Fang Cheng and Zhu Tai sat near the window. It was beginning to get dark, and the warm setting sun warmed them. The whole room was painted gold. Zhu Tai said that since the guy is so obsessed with it, he will tell him everything he knows. They each grabbed another can of soda and Zhu Tai began his story. According to him, after the Lord of Fire burned 150 people five years ago, thanks to the support of the demonic church, he was able to hide somewhere abroad. But, naturally, he began to commit outrages there too. Due to the fact that he started more than a dozen destructive fires there, he was promoted to C-rank. Zhu Tai looked towards Fang Cheng, who began to hurriedly get ready. The man ended his story by saying that the Fire Lord has now returned to their city and seems to have become much more resourceful. He said he had already tried to grab him, but it was more difficult than he thought. Fang Cheng threw his bag over his shoulder and headed towards the exit. He promised that he would find this demon and chop it into small pieces wherever he was hiding. Zhu Tai looked at him blankly. Fang Cheng turned to him and said with a serious face that by the time he finally got his hands on him, he himself would already be a C-class hunter. The man smiled at him, showing his deep wrinkles, and raised his fist up. He laughed good-naturedly and praised him. He said he shouldn't let his desire for revenge cloud his judgment. The man thought that this guy was really admirable. He waved goodbye to him and said that he was looking forward to the moment when he became stronger. Fang Cheng waved back as he walked out into the hallway and replied that he wouldn't have to wait long. It was warm outside, the lilac sky was slowly starting to darken, and the clouds were colored golden thanks to the sun. People were crossing the road at a pedestrian crossing, and public transport was passing nearby. Fang Cheng was in the equipment store. He took everything he needed and was thanked for his purchase. This time his path promises to be very dangerous and thorny, so he prepared in advance and took supplies and weapons with him. On his back was a massive backpack and a huge sword and spear. He also purchased equipment to protect his body. Fang Cheng walked past the screen on the street, which was showing news again. He listened with concern to what the TV presenter was saying. She talked about how, according to their data, several cases of arson had occurred in the city over the past few days. Behind her, photographs from the scene of the incident appeared, including a photo of the corpse of the woman who had been seen the day before by Fang Cheng and Long Yu. The TV presenter listed the places where the arson occurred, 13th Street, a bar in the Eastern District, and the Central Hospital. She announced that the number of victims had already reached 270 people, and for the safety of citizens they asked to avoid places with large crowds of people. After hearing the news, Fang Cheng tensed and became gloomy, as he thought that puppet was far from the last. The people behind him were also shocked by what they heard. The guy looked around. A loving couple walked next to him, and behind them there were quite a lot of people. He thought that, apparently, no one was going to listen to the advice broadcast on the news, and the streets remain very busy. Naturally, the followers of this demon will continue to engage in their arson. Fang Cheng decided not to think about it and sighed tiredly, closing his eyes. He decided that this was not important and that first of all he should think about how to become stronger. He walked up to a small grocery store with a red sign, and there were a lot of people inside. In this place, his older sister worked as a cashier. She smiled at him while she was checking out the goods and asked her brother what he was doing here. Fang Cheng stood in front of her and smiled. He told her that he would be gone for a while, so there might not be a home waiting for him. She was surprised, silently opening her mouth. The girl worriedly asked if her brother was sure of this, because attacks by demons had become more frequent lately and he should take care of himself. Fang Cheng continued to smile at her sincerely and began to look for something in his pocket. He said that everything was fine and ordinary demons wouldn't even leave a scratch on him. He was more worried not about himself, but about his older sister. Fang Cheng took out a box with a white smartphone from his pocket and handed it to her. He said he bought her a new phone while he was shopping. She looked at the box and confusedly asked why he did this, because it was a waste of money. Fang Cheng asked her not to say that, and then said that he would not distract her from her work and would go. 
he waved goodbye to her and his older sister, holding the phone in her hands, thanked him with a wide smile. She looked proudly after her brother leaving the store and thought that he had become more courageous and open. She was happy and hoped that he would achieve his goals and become even stronger. An abandoned part of the city, Fang Cheng walked between empty and dilapidated buildings, not a soul was nearby. In addition to abandoned and dilapidated buildings, the vacant lot also contained broken cars and piles of garbage. Fang Cheng decided to get ready and reached for his newly purchased sword. If you believe the information from the Hunter's Union, then the abandoned lands are full of D-rank demons, and sometimes there are especially strong C-rank demons. Everything around was reminiscent of the apocalypse, rubble of houses, vacant lots, silence and withered corpses of people. It was quite foggy in the abandoned part of the city. Fang Cheng sniffed and began to smell fresh blood. Apparently, he had finally reached the area where the demons lived. Fang Cheng looked around carefully and began to listen for any extraneous sounds. A demon was running in the distance, looking like a huge gray spider with a human face and horns, and he had a broken chain around his neck. He quickly moved his paws, moving around the wastelands. The demon powerfully jumped off the ground, aiming for Fang Cheng. The guy didn't notice anything at that moment. However, after a moment he felt something was wrong and turned around. At the last second, Fang Cheng was able to dodge the spider demon's huge paw. Fang Cheng was pushed back several meters by the shock wave, and the demon looked at him blankly. On the other side, a sharp shuriken cut through the air. Fang Cheng noticed him too, after which he sharply took out his sword, repelling the attack of the giant shuriken. He realized that there were two demons from the very beginning. A demon with a monkey's face and sharp fangs caught the reflected shuriken. The two demons stood next to each other and looked at Fang Cheng menacingly. The spider demon was called Arachnid, and the monkey-faced demon was called Night Stalker. Fang Cheng at this time thought that he was very lucky to meet two at once. He stood in a fighting pose with a sword and eagerly awaited the battle, because he perceived it as a warm-up. The Night Stalker's face transformed, he prepared another shuriken and shouted that the hunt had begun. He threw the shuriken with all his might, followed by several more of the same kind. All three shuriken rushed towards Fang Cheng, who was already standing at the ready. He deftly deflected all the projectiles, and the clang of metal was heard from the contact of shuriken and sword. Shuriken stuck into the ground. Fang Cheng took a look at it and realized that they were all real, although he thought that Night Stalker was using a ghost weapon. At this time, Arachnid was flying at him from above. Fang Cheng noticed this at the last moment. He managed to dodge the attack, but if he had been caught, he would have been severely wounded, because the striking force of Arachnid was enough to break the earth into pieces. The Night Stalker jumped on him from behind, holding onto his shurikens. Fang Cheng reacted quickly and then raised his sword to deflect the blow. However, the weapon could not stand it and the end of the blade simply fell off. Fang Cheng did not want to use his strength while fighting these demons, but his weapon turned out to be too fragile. He threw away what was left of the sword and partially activated his demonic powers. The right eye and right hand became demonic and a black aura appeared around them. Arachnid and Night Stalker hissed and growled at him, gradually approaching and preparing for another attack. Fang Chen grinned smugly and invited them to taste their thorns. He lowered one hand to the ground, after which wooden thorns and branches began to come out, knocking the demons off their feet. Fang Cheng looked straight ahead with concentration, after which he jumped several meters forward. The demons were able to get out of the thicket, and the Night Stalker prepared to throw his shuriken, telling the guy that he would die today. He threw shuriken towards Fang Cheng, with Arachnid flying in the air next to him. Fang Cheng managed to activate his blade arms, which helped repel the attack of sharp projectiles. While Fang Cheng deflected the projectiles, he grinned and said that he would live, and the Night Stalker would die from his own blades. The shuriken reflected by Fang Cheng flew straight towards the demons, injuring them. The Night Stalker was hit in the shoulder, and Arachnid lost one of his paws. Fang Cheng's face was distraught. He shouted that they needed to continue and that the battle had just begun. Fang Cheng released the tentacles from his hand that grabbed the demons. He lifted them high into the air and then slammed them onto the ground. As soon as the guy removed his tentacles, the demons began to rise and growl aggressively at him. The arachnid opened its large mouth and began to release acrid, completely black smoke. Fang Cheng immediately plunged into it but he thought that this stupid and pathetic trick would not work on him. On the contrary, it gave him the opportunity to hide in this poisonous smoke and counterattack. The demons had already begun to rejoice that they had killed the guy. True, they did not see his body. In front of them there was only a large cloud of smoke. A second later, the guy cut through the smoke with his blades and ran towards them. 
he inflicted two deep cuts on Arachnid, after which his body was torn into four equal pieces. The Night Stalker who saw this had already begun to panic as Fang Cheng approached him. The demon began to run away in fear, but Fang Cheng was already taking out his spear. He began to swing it, after which he thought that during a battle the most important thing is to make sure that you kill the enemy. Fang Cheng threw a spear at the demon, and it pierced right through his chest. The Night Stalker fell to the ground, dying. Several system windows appeared. You killed the Night Stalker demon and received his throwing ability. Killed the Arachnid demon and gained its black mist and increased body agility abilities. Fang Cheng looked at the corpses of the defeated demons. He grinned and clenched his hand into a fist in front of him. He could not even imagine that in this way he could not only gain skills, but also increase his characteristics. He could already feel the changes in his body. Someone in the fog laughed loudly, after which a mysterious voice said that those who are looking for a quick way out rarely think about the possible consequences. Four silhouettes were visible in the fog. An unknown voice made Fang Cheng tense up. Four men wearing black hoodies with guns emerged from the fog. They looked menacing. The guy with the axe said that if they understood everything correctly, then Fang Cheng is the same demon king that was talked about so much on the news. The guy with the saber in his hand ordered Fang Cheng to give them his loot and get out of here. He asked him to be a good boy and not force them to hurt him. Fang Cheng was still half in demon form. He didn't think that he would be revealed so easily. He decided that he needed to hedge his bets and get rid of this gang of thieves. The guy menacingly put one foot on the cobblestone and began to provoke them, saying that since they want his prey, then let them come and take it, and he will see if they can do it. One of the bandits said that Fang Cheng did not understand the situation he was in, and his friend replied that they did not care, and would just kill him and receive a reward from above. They lined up opposite the guy, preparing to attack him. The roar of an engine was heard, and from the fog someone's voice said that he could smell it. Everyone on the battlefield turned towards the noise. A grey demon with the face of a bull and huge horns on a red motorcycle was approaching them. In his left hand he had a huge sword with a red eye on the hilt, which he moved along the ground, causing a dull sound of metal hitting stone. The demon had a grey chain around his neck and a bandage on his thigh. He shouted in an ominous voice that he could smell blood and death. The demon jumped on his motorcycle into the air, raising his sword into the air. The bandits, confused, began to ask where this demon came from, and prepared to flee from the scene of the upcoming battle. They were in a panic and were not ready to fight him. They never got around to doing this. The demon cut the guys into pieces with a few swings of his sword. Before dying, they only managed to utter muffled groans. It was a piece of cake for the demon. He landed on the ground and headed towards Fang Cheng. He stood directly opposite. Uncertainty and to some extent fear were visible on his face. The demon stopped his motorcycle in front of the guy, lowered his sword and began to click displeasedly. He said it was just terrible. Fang Cheng looked at him intensely. He thought that this demon dealt with 4D class hunters in a couple of seconds, which meant that he was definitely not some small fry. The demon threw the sword over his shoulder and said menacingly that he would never have thought that the most powerful demon would end up in the body of some boy. Fang Cheng looked at him angrily and confidently asked who he was and how he knew the demon that had settled inside him. The demon shouted back to him that it didn't matter who he was, the only important thing was that the demon of extermination was now sitting inside the guy. The demon stood up from his motorcycle and pointed his sword at Fang Cheng. He said that the guy couldn't even imagine how strong his demon was. Fang Cheng stood motionless. He replied that the demon seemed to know a lot about him. The demon chuckled displeasedly and replied that although he became its carrier, he didn't know about it. He told him that in the past it was the most powerful demon of their world. He was an invincible being. If he had not been killed using a vile method, the demon cannot even imagine how long his reign would have lasted. He talked about this with a certain pride and respect, imagining the image of this demon in his head. Fang Cheng looked at him blankly and asked if the demon had come to him to obtain the power of the extermination demon. The menacing demon grinned and chuckled, saying that he was quite quick-witted. Fang Cheng apologized sarcastically and said that he was not going to give up his power just yet. He activated his throwing ability, after which a huge black shuriken appeared in his hand. The demon got back on the motorcycle and rushed towards Fang Cheng, shouting that he was just a pathetic D-class hunter and asked how he was going to face him. He began to move his sword along the ground again and ordered the guy to accept his fate, because he did not deserve the power of the demon of extermination. There were only a few seconds left before their collision. The guy dodged the motorcycle and jumped to the other side. The demon turned to him and praised him for his good reaction, after which he pointed his sword in his direction. Fang Cheng managed to substitute his blade, thereby repelling the attack. He stood firmly on his feet, and the demon on his motorcycle was tilted slightly to the side. 
a system window has appeared, a C-rank enemy has been detected, the true form has been activated. Fang Cheng, who was previously only partially in demon form, now transformed completely. He looked angrily at his opponent with his red eyes. He stood firmly and prepared to attack with full force. Fang Cheng powerfully threw Shuriken at the demon, shouting he would destroy it. The demon easily stopped the Shuriken with his sword, after which he began to spin it on the tip of the blade. He started laughing sinisterly and asked if the guy really thought these pathetic tricks would help him. The demon with a nasty grin on his face threw that shuriken back at Fang Cheng, saying that it was too bold for such a weakling. The spinning shuriken began to fly towards the guy, who was thinking about what to do next. He used his tentacles to grab the middle of the shuriken. With a tentacle, he lifted the shuriken up, after which he began to spin it again in the air. In a matter of moments, he again threw shuriken towards the enemy, who did not expect it. It hit him square in the head, causing him to lean back slightly. He had a scar on his face under his right eye and he said how amazing it was that he was able to get it. The shuriken, after hitting the demon in the face, flew away in the other direction, and the demon again began to rush on his bike towards Fang Cheng, pointing his sharp sword at him. He shouted that the fun was over. A sharp blade slashed the guy's chest. He was about to attack again with a combination of tentacles and shuriken, but did not have time. The demon drove past him. Fang Cheng's pupils shrank as he looked at his chest and saw a huge deep wound. He realized that he could not keep up with his sword and felt the demonic blood flowing out of him. Blood splashed onto his face and onto the ground. His face became focused, despite the wound that could have ended his life. Several new system windows appeared, warning. The danger level is extremely high. Body restrictions are temporarily lifted. A demon on a motorcycle, passing by, laughed nastily and asked if this was really all he was capable of. Fang Cheng's eyes began to glow with a bright red light, emitting lightning. The aura around him became more powerful and became larger. The power of the demon of extermination began to flare up within him like wildfire. His appearance began to change, the previous shell began to change, as if it began to fall off. Behind this shell was black skin with a red sheen. His sinister smile appeared, revealing his teeth. His eyes burned, and his smile added to the feeling of anxiety that arises just by looking at him. An aura hovered around him. Fang Cheng really liked this feeling of intoxicating power, it was simply incredible for him. The demon, who was watching the new transformation from afar, did not understand why this guy's power began to increase and increase so sharply. Fang Cheng raised his head and roared loudly as a voice in his head repeatedly ordered him to kill his opponent. He frowned, his eyes starting to glow even brighter. He told the voice in his head to shut up, because he didn't need to be reminded of what he was going to do anyway. He ran at lightning speed towards the demon, grinning ominously. The demon sat on his motorcycle and held his sword at the ready. He was unprepared for the impact, so when Fang Cheng swung his blades at him, smiling smugly, the demon began to fly back with a shocked exclamation. He fell off the motorcycle and flew several meters back, rolling further on the ground. He stood on one leg and slammed his sword into the ground. He looked at Fang Cheng menacingly and said that he could no longer expect mercy. Fang Cheng wanted exactly this. He wanted to kill this demon and tear it into pieces. He said in his demonic voice that their battle was just beginning. The guy wanted to strike with his blade on his hand, but the demon managed to put down his sword. He parried the attack and then knocked Fang Cheng slightly to the other side. He smugly asked Fang Cheng if he really thought he could handle him, the sword knight. They circled the battlefield as if they were in a passionate dance. No one wanted to give up and each of them made every effort to win. They faced each other. The demon shouted menacingly, and Fang Cheng continued to smile ominously. He growled threateningly and decided to attack the demon with his blades again. He repelled his attacks time after time. From the impact force they were thrown away from each other, the demon did not understand why he had changed so much. He believed that Fang Cheng was now more like a madman who could not get enough of his power. Fang Cheng opened his mouth slightly to activate a combined tentacle and spike attack. He pressed his hands to the ground, and tentacles came out that bound the demon, preventing him from escaping. Along with the tentacles, the demon's body was pierced by sharp wooden spikes. He tried to get out of the trap, tried to pull out his sword in order to cut the tentacles. He called Fang Cheng a scoundrel, to which he replied that he was just a piece of meat on a cutting board and he had no right to complain about anything. Fang Cheng again prepared his blades on his hands to finish off the enemy. The demon's eyes lit up, because he still had aces up his sleeve, and one of them was his bike. Behind Fang Cheng, his opponent's motorcycle appeared, its engine roaring, and it glowed with red lightning. Blades appeared from under the handlebars of the bike, like a butterfly knife. He drove straight at Fang Cheng, 
preparing to cut him in half, but Fang Cheng remained calm and dodged the bike and its blades. Bike stood between the demon and Fang Cheng, at which time his opponent was able to cut the tentacles with his sword and free himself. He laughed loudly and said that Fang Cheng should have realized that every knight has his own faithful horse, and in his case it is a motorcycle. Fang Cheng pointed his palms towards him and shouted that he was rejoicing early. Fang Cheng used the Black Mist ability, and the demon began to hide in the Doctor of Black, acrid smoke. He reproached the guy for using vile tricks again. The enemy tried to cover his face so as not to choke on smoke. He ordered his bike to drive forward so that it would knock Fang Cheng down. At this time, the guy took a position from which he was about to jump. He used the jump boost ability, and the bones in his legs seemed to become thicker and stronger. He easily jumped over the bike that was rushing towards him. He raised his blades in the air and shouted to the demon that this was the end. The enemy was taken aback, he was completely at a loss. You could see in the reflection of his eyes how fast Fang Cheng was approaching him. With one swing of his blades, he inflicted two deep cuts on the demon, leaving him behind. The already weakened enemy looked at him and said that the guy was ready to resort to any methods to win. He fell to his knees and blood from his wounds immediately began to splash in all directions. After that, he fell exhausted on his stomach, dropping his sword. Fang Chen, who was standing with his back to him at that time, grinned and showed his sharp fangs. The demon tried to reach out his hand to the sword, which lay a couple of centimeters from him, but he didn't even have the strength to even do that. He smiled sadly and asked himself if this was called disappointment. He was near death and with a dull wheeze said that being cut down by an enemy was the greatest shame for him, a knight of the sword. He asked Fang Cheng to finish him off already. The guy approached him and menacingly said that if he wants a quick and painless death, then let him tell him about the Lord of Fire. This made the dying demon wonder. He looked up at him and asked again. Fang Cheng, looking down at the demon, said that recently the Fire Lord's puppets had begun to become active in the city. He asked if the demon knew about this. He replied that of course he knew about it. The demon closed his eyes and said that the Fire Lord is a demon who was raised by the demonic church, and even though they are both C-rank demons, the difference between their powers is simply enormous. Fang Cheng looked at him questioningly and asked if the powers of C-rank demons could be different. The demon answered him positively and said that even among C-rank there is a hierarchy, and according to this hierarchy, the Fire Lord is a mid-level demon, and against Fang Cheng it is only a low-level one. The hierarchy consisted of three levels, low, medium, and high. He added that defeating the Fire Lord would be incredibly difficult. Fang Cheng smiled ominously and asked if it was harder than getting out of hell. He told the demon that these were the words of a real loser and that he was just a weakling. He proudly stood in front of his face and told his story about how he too used to be the same cowardly loser, because of which he went through countless amounts of suffering and bullying. But he did not give up and continued to train, no matter what, because this is the only way he can defeat his enemies. He looked at his sharp claws and said that in the end, if he began to fear some demon, he could no longer be called a hunter, and the Lord of Fire must die at his hands. He began to walk away from the battlefield as the demon looked after him in shock. The enemy opened his mouth in surprise and thought about how confident this boy was. He closed his eyes bitterly and said that he was just a worthless knight who was defeated in a fair fight. He would never again feel the same confidence that he exuded. He asked to simply kill him. Fang Cheng turned around and said that he did not want to get his hands dirty on him by killing a broken opponent. The demon accepted this answer. A black spiral aura began to form in front of him. His body began to slowly evaporate into a black aura. He said that since Fang Cheng did not want to kill him, then let him at least take the trophy from the loser. Fang Cheng turned around, puzzled, not understanding what he meant. The demon's wounded body almost evaporated. He said his wounds were too serious and he wouldn't live long with them. He decided that he would rather choose to burn his life to the ground and give his power to the guy than to slowly take it away. Fang Cheng asked what he meant, but did not wait for an answer. The demon's body turned into a lump of black aura that rose into the sky. The guy watched this strange event. An eye appeared from the aura. The demon asked to be allowed to become a step in the ascent of the guy's path. The formless aura began to take the form of a sword, on whose hilt there was a demon's eye. Fang Cheng looked at him puzzled and decided to come closer. The sword is fully formed. It was black with red tints and its size was crushing. Fang Cheng extended his hand towards him, after which he grabbed the sword. He lifted it up and began to examine it, at which time he again began to take on a human form. The guy couldn't believe that the demon had actually turned into a magic sword. He turned it to get a better look. Now, when he holds this blade in his hands, he has the feeling that he and he are one. He decided that it could even be called a living sword. After transforming into a stronger demon form, the guy's shirt disappeared and his trained body appeared. 
Suddenly, a voice inside Fang Cheng laughed and said that the guy managed to brainwash the demon into giving up his power without even killing him. Fang Cheng stood in a stupor. He didn't understand why the demon inside him, who usually spoke like an artificial intelligence, suddenly began to act consciously like a human. A dark red clot began to come out of his chest. The demon of extermination said that it was time to go outside and get some fresh air. The dark clot came out more and more from the guy, which shocked him. The sphere from his chest began to take on a familiar appearance, after which it spread its wings. The demon of extermination appeared in front of the guy, only in a smaller form, as if he were a child demon. He hovered in the air and proudly said that now Fang Cheng had personally seen his master and ordered him to kneel down. Fang Cheng examined the demon and asked if it was a smaller version of the extermination demon. He said that in this form he looked more like a pet than a demon. The demon of extermination looked at him blankly. He became very angry and there was a fire in his eyes. He asked how Fang Cheng dared to call his name in front of his master and shouted that he was the lord of the demon world and not some kind of animal. Fang Cheng looked at him calmly and asked if this was the true body of the extermination demon. The demon cleared his throat and said that it could be called that way. He exhaled tiredly and replied that it would be more correct to say that this is a spiritual body, not a physical one. With a smile on his evil face, he pointed his finger at Fang Cheng and said that at the moment when the guy was attacked by Blade, his soul was attracted by the violent hatred that the guy exuded, and the demon thought that he could become an excellent vessel. He lent him his power to destroy demons, and he absorbed their souls. Thus, the extermination demon was going to regain his physical body sooner or later. Fang Cheng looked at this demon with a serious face and thought that he was not even trying to hide his true intentions. But Fang Cheng admitted to himself honestly that he needed his strength. If he acts carefully, then in his opinion no problems should arise. Fang Cheng approached the demon of extermination and agreed to continue their cooperation. But in return he obliged to help him defeat the Fire Lord. The demon chuckled evilly. He opened his wings again, crossed his arms over his chest and ominously said that one fire lord would not be enough for him, and they must destroy the entire demonic church. Fang Cheng asked in shock why they would destroy the entire demon church and if the extermination demon had anything to do with them. He fluttered his little wings in front of Fang Cheng and said that he wanted to destroy this entire demonic church with all his dark soul. He folded his hands on his chest and said that the head of this church, the so-called high priest, was the one who vilely killed him. Fang Cheng calmly asked about the high priest of the demonic church, but did not receive an answer. The demon angrily clenched his fists and shouted that if he were as strong now as he was in life, the priest could not rule either the world of demons or the world of people. Fang Cheng looked up at the extermination demon and asked again who this high priest was. He said that little is known about the head of the demonic church, but everyone knows about the church itself now. The demon closed his eyes and said detachedly that Fang Cheng only needs to know about him that he is the initiator of many conspiracies. Fang Cheng didn't know what to answer, so he remained silent. The demon of extermination smiled and crossed his arms over his chest again. He suggested that we first talk about the guy's condition. The demon promised to help him become stronger and kill the Fire Lord, and when they kill this demon, he will help him destroy the demonic church. Fang Cheng asked him in shock, his eyes widening. The demon looked at him and grinned. He asked if Fang Cheng was scared and warned that only a good demon like him would offer him such a deal. Fang Cheng calmed down and said with a serious face that it seems that the time has finally come to wipe out this demonic church from the face of the earth. The demon showed him a thumbs up and smiled, saying, that's great. He said his owner liked this attitude. Fang Cheng chuckled without saying anything else to him. He thought about the fact that the demon of extermination calls himself the master, but he himself looks like a small pet. He lowered the corners of his lips and eyebrows. The demon noticed a strange expression on his face and flew up to him displeasedly, asking if he doubted his strength. Fang Cheng was confused and said that he had no doubts, and he wondered how he knew what he was thinking, and wondered if this demon could read minds. Fang Cheng grabbed his sword and said that it was time for them to stop talking in vain. He looked at his demon and assumed that there must be a whole bunch of demons here, and suggested that they start clearing it. The demon of extermination looked to the side as if he had noticed something. And it was true, from the other side the bike of that demon who had turned into a sword was approaching them. Fang Cheng looked at the motorcycle. The demon of extermination flew up to the bike and assumed that this magical motorcycle recognized Fang Cheng as its master. A powerful motorcycle drove right up to the guy. He sat on it and grabbed the steering wheel. With a smile on his face, he said that in this case he would not refuse such a thing. He attached the sword to the back of the bike. He gripped the steering wheel tighter and looked forward with concentration. 
For the first time, he encounters a vehicle that uses the owner's energy as fuel. The motorcycle took off and rushed forward at high speed, followed by the demon of extermination. The motorcycle engine roared powerfully as they sped forward. Fang Cheng said with a smile on his face that he felt good about feeling his strength through the speed of the bike. The demon of destruction flying to his right laughed and said that he did not yet know what real power was. Fang Cheng rode his bike so fast that he kicked up columns of dust from the ground. They drove up to one of the abandoned buildings, in the ruins of which someone was hiding and waiting. These were demons, similar to humans, but with gray skin and wide mouths full of sharp teeth. The demons attacked Fang Cheng at once, growling aggressively. Fang Cheng began to take out his living sword that was attached to the back of the motorcycle. He held the sword forward, holding it with one hand while he continued to control the motorcycle with the other hand. In an instant, all the demons were cut in half, Fang Cheng didn't even put much effort into it. The corpses of demons scattered in all directions. The guy continues to ride and chop up demons one after another. The demon of extermination, who hovered near his left shoulder, said that everything was fine with the harvest here. He told Fang Cheng that they were D-ranked demons, ghouls. Each time you kill such a ghoul, his agility rating will increase. Fang Cheng looked at him, smiled and said that this is interesting. He grinned and continued that now the system is not in his head, but sits next to him. They drove further to the ruins. The same demons sat on the walls and roofs of buildings. A gloomy fog hovered around, and the red moon hanging above them added an ominous effect. Fang Cheng started the motorcycle again and suggested setting a small goal for himself, to destroy all the demons in the abandoned part of the city. Four days later, the weather was beautiful, the green leaves of the trees rustled in the wind, there was not a single cloud in the sky, and the sun reflected from the windows of the Hunter Academy. Long Yu, who was sitting on the classroom level, sadly looked out the window at a withered tree branch without leaves. She put her hand under her chin and wondered why Fang Cheng still hadn't shown up at school. On top of that, his phone was always switched off and he did not answer calls. Long Yu looked down, clasped her hands together and sighed sadly. She hoped he wasn't trying to take revenge on the Fire Lord alone. After all, now is not the right time for this, in Long Yu's opinion. At the same time, while Long Yu was sitting at school, Fang Cheng was riding along the road in the city center on his bike. All the people stopped, paying attention to him. The bike's wheels were spinning incredibly fast, and on his back he had a huge bag, which was filled to the brim with the corpses of captured and killed demons. Fang Cheng held the steering wheel confidently and looked contentedly at the road. He was able to find clothes somewhere. He was wearing a white t-shirt and a gray cape. On his shoulder sat the demon of extermination. The guy was glad to see the familiar streets of Dongju again, having returned after a long absence. He smiled confidently and thought that the Lord of Fire would soon die at his hands. Fang Cheng arrived at the office of the Dongju Hunters Union. The wind lifted the torn leaves from the trees upward, causing them to spin. The sky was bright blue, gentle clouds floated across it, and the sun reflected from the windows of the buildings. Fang Cheng proudly showed off all his loot to Zhu Tai and Xiao Nan. On the canvas one could see the ghouls, the Night Stalker, and the arachnids. Zio Nan asked in shock if he brought it all himself. Her eyes widened in surprise and her mouth fell open. She was holding a tablet with a stylus. It was difficult for her to even imagine how strong Fang Cheng was. Zhu Tai turned to him and smiled. He said that it was surprising that among his prey there was even a C-rank demon, the original knight. Apparently, this was the same demon that then became the sword for Fang Cheng. Zhu Tai praised him and said that he had become much stronger. Fang Cheng said with a serious face that he was lucky. He lied about being lucky enough to meet a wounded firstborn knight, but he simply finished him off. He thought that if his form was not right, he would not be able to cope with him, so for now it was better not to attract unnecessary attention to himself. Fang Cheng looked at Zhu Tai and asked if he had found out where the Fire Lord was now. Zhu Tai immediately stopped smiling and put on a serious face. He said that although the Lord of Fire himself had not yet made himself known, his followers had appeared several times. As a result of their activities in crowded areas, hundreds more citizens died. Fang Cheng lowered his eyebrows and asked if it was announced on the news that the city government had banned people from gathering in large crowds. Zhu Tai sadly lowered his head and responded positively, but said that the people did not want to abide by this rule. Zhu Tai scratched his beard and closed his eyes. He said that we could at least take tonight. The Black Sun group will be giving their concert, and he is sure that there will be a large crowd of people there. Their crazy fans will come, even if they are told directly that a fire might break out there. He imagined in his head a bright performance by a rock band with color music. Fang Cheng lowered the corners of his lips and frowned. 
He asked if it seemed strange to Jutai that they decided to give their concert at such a dangerous moment, and he suggested that it might have something to do with the Fire Lord. Jutai replied that they had thought about it too, but they had no real evidence, so they could not take action. And their fans are mostly completely crazy, so you can't dissuade them. Fang Cheng thoughtfully replied that he understood everything, but he himself decided that he would have to go to this concert himself and find out everything. Xiao Nan looked at her tablet and smiled. She said she had finished calculating the reward for all the loot he had brought. She has already transferred 1.2 million yuan to his bank account. Fang Cheng's eyes became round and his pupils shrank. He didn't expect it to come out so much, so he asked the amount again. Xiao Nan answered him that she had calculated everything correctly, because for just one original night of C rank there was a reward of 1 million yuan. Fang Chen grinned contentedly, because he didn't think there would be so many. He decided that he would continue to focus more on Class C demons since they fetched a ton of money. The extermination demon sitting on his shoulder said that Fang Cheng was terribly fond of money. In the evening they arrived at the VIP bar Black Sun for a concert of the band of the same name. The bar's name was emblazoned on the building and posters hung on the walls. There were expensive cars in the parking lot, and a lot of people were heading into the bar itself. There was even a guy with a mohawk and a word shaved into the back of his head. People looked at the posters hanging there and chatted with each other. Fang Cheng rode his motorcycle into the parking lot. The sky had already become completely dark and stars could be seen in it. Fang Cheng stood up from the motorcycle and leaned against it, crossing his arms over his chest. He said there were so many people here that he didn't even notice right away that they were performing in their own bar. The demon of extermination hovered in the air next to him. Fang Cheng asked him if he was afraid that someone might notice him. The demon replied that now he is just an embodiment of the soul and no one except Fang Cheng will be able to see him. The club's DJ went outside and greeted all the visitors. He showed the sign of the horns and shouted that the concert would start very soon, and asked everyone to prepare their tickets in advance. He was wearing a white sweatshirt and black jacket. He also wore black glasses and a red hat. Visitors began shouting the name of the group and also showing the sign of the horns. They all started to walk into the bar, towards the stage, including Fang Cheng. He had his living sword behind his back. He decided that it was time to find out what this black sun was. The sticks beat loudly on the drums, setting the rhythm for the entire song. The bassist was plucking the strings of his red bass guitar. The lead singer wore a black leather jacket with spikes and sang that he was done with the war, but the world was still far from him. The musicians were performing on stage, loud music was coming from the speakers. The lead singer wore a red bandage, he continued to sing that he had a fever and chills, all his hopes and dreams turned into wild horror. He sang that he could fly, but he had not felt the wind on his face for a long time. All white and purple spotlights were directed onto the stage, and color music was playing. The crowd cheered and cheered, with many shouting the band's name. Fang Cheng was not impressed with the performance. He thought they were playing rock music too loudly. At this time, the extermination demon on his shoulder was enjoying the music and singing along. Apparently he liked this music. The crowd cheered the band on. In it, Fang Cheng noticed someone familiar who was standing and smoking a cigarette. He realized that it was Du Lan's deputy. Looks like he's also investigating arson cases. Du Lan looked at the stage emotionlessly and smoked a cigarette with his hands in his pocket. The soloist closed his eyes and gave his all to the performance. He sang that he eats in sorrow and laughs through pain, that he will have no peace either in life or after death. The guitarist played a cool guitar riff, and the lead singer put his foot on the speaker and began encouraging the audience to be noisier. They immediately began to scream loudly, raising their fists in the air, and shouting the name of the group. The soloist immediately made an eerie expression on his face and extended his hand into the audience. He invited them all to devote their lives to the great flame together. These words made Du Lan and Fang Cheng tense and wary. The band's fans immediately began shouting that they would follow the Black Sun and give their lives to the great flame. It was as if a fire began to flare up in their eyes. The soloist immediately became inspired and began to smile terribly. He shouted that the madness of the great flame was about to begin. A huge red eye appeared on the ceiling, from which flames and smoke emanated. The extermination demon folded his arms and said that it was like a demon sacrifice spell. Fang Cheng said seriously that he knew something like this would start here. The crowd continued to cheer and rejoice as the eye looked down on them from the ceiling. The rocker's instruments also caught fire, including the lead singer's microphone and the drummer's sticks. They raised them up and turned to the magnanimous Lord of Fire, greeting him on behalf of all the mortals present here. Some visitors realized that something strange and wrong was going on here, after which they began to run away in panic. 
Fang Chen continued to stand in the crowd and watch what was happening with the extermination demon. Fang Cheng turned his head and among the fleeing crowd he saw Du Lan, who was not even in a hurry to leave. He wondered if he wanted to capture the Fire Lord too. Du Lan stood silently, showing no emotion, and continued to smoke his cigarette. Fang Cheng looked back at the crowd and decided to merge with them to find some quiet and secluded place where he could merge with the demon and take on his fighting form. The red eye on the ceiling began to attract people to it, burning them. He said the smell of burning flesh was wonderful. The rockers' hair on their heads burned off, their pupils and irises disappeared, and as a result, only the whites of their eyeballs remained. Their heads were on fire, and on their foreheads was the sign of the demonic church. They raised their burning instruments into the air, shouting that this was the true voice of the Fire Lord. They greeted him repeatedly, rejoicing at his appearance. A smiling, red-skinned demon began to emerge from the eye on the ceiling. Du Lan, smoking a cigarette, said that he had already begun to think that the Fire Lord would not appear today. The Lord of Fire descended from the red eye into the bar. He was much larger and taller than Fang Cheng's demonic form. He had a long tail, huge horns and a cross on his chest. He smiled ominously as he was completely engulfed in flames. His eyes were the same color as flames, and the mark of the demonic church was also present on his forehead. He laughed evilly as he looked around the bar and said that everything was well done and rejoiced at the huge number of victims, saying that it was very tasty. He folded his arms and looked at Du Lan. He asked who the blonde man was and why he hadn't become a victim yet. There was a musical group standing right under the Fire Lord. They ran towards Du Lan with burning heads and shouted that their lord need not worry, because they would deal with him and then sacrifice him to him. Du Lan, without letting go of the cigarette from his mouth, put his hands forward and began to activate his power. He asked if the rockers could compete with him, and said that he did not have time to have fun with some henchmen and he only needed the Fire Lord. His own hands were engulfed in a blue aura, and then two huge bone hands appeared right in front of the rockers' faces, reaching towards them. Bone hands threw the rockers in different directions, preventing them from injuring their owner. Despite this, the Fire Lord's minions still surrounded Du Lan. The man did not panic. The rockers were engulfed in flames from head to toe. They began to laugh loudly and encourage each other. Bone hands guarded Du Lan. He threw his hands forward, after which this movement was repeated by skeletal hands. He took a defensive stance. The rockers couldn't get close to him. The Fire Lord folded his arms over his chest and chuckled thoughtfully. He thought that this blonde man was capable of something. The demon guessed that he must be one of those called the Night's Watch. Fang Cheng in his improved demonic form was already flying at the Fire Lord from behind. He was going to attack the main enemy with his blades. The Fire Lord turned around and looked at him in surprise. He immediately created a wall of fire, but Fang Cheng was able to overcome it. He simply cut the fire shield with his blades, after which the Fire Lord's defenses fell. The demon noticed in surprise that a demon would also attack him. The Fire Lord prepared to swing his fist and said that since he attacked him, it means he is ready to accept his death. He released a huge pillar of flame from his fist, but Fang Cheng was able to dodge it. The flames destroyed the floor of the bar. Fang Cheng was thrown a little to the side, but he was able to stay on his feet. He gritted his teeth and frowned, after which he thought that the Fire Lord was strong and it was not for nothing that he was assigned the average level of C-class. The Fire Lord flew up to him and looked down at him. He showed his grin and burning eyes, after which he said that he smelled of the demon of extermination. Fang Cheng shouted that it was time for him to stop talking and it was time to just die. He began to run towards him, blades ready. The Fire Lord was waiting for this. They pressed their foreheads together and both looked at each other with sinister smiles. Fang Cheng's opponent said that his hands are covered with special lava, which is much harder than metal. The guy told him that in that case he would cut them off for him. The Fire Lord hit Fang Cheng, but he was able to block the blow. At this time, Du Lan continued to deal with the demon's henchmen. He hit them with his magical bone hands. At some point, the man turned around and was surprised by the battle between Fang Cheng and the Fire Lord. He noticed the second demon, whom he had already seen somewhere, after which he remembered that this was the same demon king they were looking for. Du Lan's pupils shrank. He didn't understand why he was fighting the Fire Lord. Fang Cheng launched several blades at his enemy. While they were flying towards him, he didn't even bother to somehow avoid her. He put his hands forward and said that he didn't even need to dodge such a pathetic attack. With one blow he broke all the blades. Fang Cheng was taken aback. He looked at it in shock and wondered if he was really able to destroy its blades with just his physical strength and the strength of his hands. The Lord of Fire ran from his place towards Fang Cheng and shouted to him that now he would clearly show him the difference in their strengths. He hit the guy right in the chest. 
the demon flew with him for several meters, breaking the wall. Du Lan turned away from his affairs and paid attention to this, standing in shock. Fang Cheng and the Fire Lord had already broken the second wall. The demon continued to hold his fist to the boy's chest. They were already on the street when Fang Cheng was thrown into a parked car. As he began to rise to his feet, he felt as if the Fire Lord had an infinite amount of power. The demon grinned and again began to prepare for another attack. He mockingly asked if this was all he was capable of, and said that this was a disgrace for a demon. He hit the car with his fist, because at the last moment Fang Cheng managed to dodge the attack. The car was completely smashed to pieces. The Fire Lord looked towards Fang Cheng, who was a few meters away from him. The demon decided to pick up the car to throw it at Fang Cheng, and told him that he could not run away from him forever. The wrecked car flew towards the guy. He decided to activate his tentacles and release them from his hands, which then caught the flying car. He changed the direction of his attack, pointing the machine at the Fire Lord. She hit him in the face, but couldn't knock him down. The demon growled and coughed up blood. He didn't think the guy would be able to direct his own attack against him. They stood opposite each other, engulfed in their auras. Fang Cheng took out his sword and angrily asked if he remembered the tragedy he caused in the Dongju City Market five years ago. The Fire Lord grinned at him in response. He said it was the same as making him remember what he ate five years ago. His entire body was engulfed in fierce flames. These words made Fang Cheng really angry. He grabbed his sword as hard as he could. He jumped high into the air and swung his sword, shouting that he would make the Fire Lord pay for this in blood. The demon, in turn, took out his fiery spear. Fang Cheng attacked him, but the Lord of Fire managed to substitute his burning weapon. They fought for some time, but Fang Cheng was unable to break his defense. Then the Lord of Fire said that his sword was driven only by hatred, there was no strength in it, and even a child would swing it more skillfully. Fang Cheng swung his sword again and ordered the demon to shut his filthy mouth. Suddenly the Lord of Fire pierced him with his spear. He called him a fool and said that hatred only dulls his spirit and it has so exhausted his will that it will not be difficult to break it. Fang Cheng's eyes opened wide. He let out a muffled groan. The Fire Lord pulled his spear from the guy's body, after which the exhausted guy fell on his back. The demon extended his hand in his direction and laughed smugly. He asked if that was really all he could do and said that he didn't even have time to have fun. Fang Cheng's eyes began to close, and blood sprayed from his chest. He thought that it would all end like this. Fang Cheng's demonic form disappeared and he was back in human form. The extermination demon flew up to him and said that he looked really bad. He asked how they even managed to call him the Demon King. Fang Cheng's face was bruised and he could barely speak. He asked the demon of extermination if he had come to mock him. The demon flew up to him and said that if he wants to destroy his opponent, then he must show him his determination. And if he lacks strength, then let him use more energy. He asked to remember why he started fighting in the first place. Fang Cheng looked at him in surprise. He looked up and began to think. The guy looked at the demon of extermination again and told him that he started fighting to get more money and provide a good life for his older sister. He clenched his hand into a fist and added that he wanted to destroy the Fire Lord to avenge him for his parents. The extermination demon asked if it was true that he had never fought for himself. He grinned evilly and said that the demon of extermination's power was that it loved to fight and crush its enemies. These words made Fang Cheng surprised, as if he had come to some new thought. The demon of extermination ordered him to stand up and continue the fight, finding his killer instinct. The demon of extermination turned into a black aura, after which it began to inhabit the body of the shocked Fang Cheng. He absorbed more and more of the extermination demon's power, beginning to glow red. He asked him what he was doing. At this time, the Fire Lord approached him with his spear in his hand. He saw this powerful black and red aura. The demon looked around, not understanding what was happening. He asked why this aura was getting stronger and stronger. Fang Cheng's scarlet eye began to glow brightly in the darkness. He changed his appearance again, becoming even stronger. He became much larger. His skin became purple, the horns on his head became wider, and his fangs became even larger and sharper. Fang Cheng shouted that he would kill the Fire Lord. The main character, shrouded in red energy, let out a loud scream as he stood up straight. The Fire Lord wondered why this guy became stronger despite receiving a mortal wound. He thought, the longer he fights, the more wounds he receives, the stronger he becomes. He thought that this was exactly what the demon killer was. Fang Cheng looked at the Fire Lord with his red eyes flashing. Pushing off the ground, he charged with an evil grin on his face, and the Fire Lord thought that after evolving his body, his explosive power had at least doubled. 
His eyes widened as his opponent came right in front of his face. He dodged, and the main character hit the ground with force, breaking it into fragments. He extended a black, clawed hand towards the Fire Lord. Fang Chen grabbed him by the throat. He hit the ground with force, destroying the ground and cars around with a shock wave. Blood gushed from the Fire Lord's mouth. The car fell to the ground, turning upside down. The Fire Lord clenched his teeth, said he was crazy. Wreathed in flames he asked if he thought that would be enough to kill him. A pillar of flame enveloped him, and the main character stepped back. The Fire Lord raised a clawed hand, shrouded in fire. Completely covered in flames, the Fire Lord asked with an evil smile if he liked his completed form. He immediately rushed forward to attack. Fang Cheng said that he is not afraid of some pathetic flame because it cannot harm him in his armored form. He grabbed the Fire Lord by the shoulder. The main character sharply moved his hands, shrouded in red energy, downward, tearing off the enemy's hand. The Fire Lord looked furiously at his shoulder, where his hand had previously been. Jumping back, he asked how dare he. He shouted that this was unforgivable. The Fire Lord's hand appeared on his body again. During this time, Fang Cheng closed the distance between them and swung his fist with an evil grin. He slammed his fist into his opponent's torso, which was engulfed in flames. The Fire Lord slammed his fist back and shouted that one of them would definitely die today. They moved quickly along the ground, exchanging blows and scattering abandoned cars. A stream of flame from the hand of the Fire Lord headed towards the main character. Fang Cheng charged, thrusting his fist forward as the flames around it dissipated. The Fire Lord, gritting his teeth, wondered how this was possible. He wondered how he could dispel its flames with his bare hands. He thought that his mind had been completely consumed by violent rage, and now he felt no pain at all. The protagonist's punch pushed the Fire Lord away, slamming him into the wall. Enveloped in red energy, Fang Cheng asked for what purpose he started that fire five years ago. The Fire Lord, crouching to the ground, said that he was carrying out the orders of the High Priest, and he was just the executioner of the demonic sect, acting on his orders. The main character, sword in hand, asked about the High Priest of the demonic sect. The Lord of Fire said that it was all his fault. He asked why not just let him go, because it was not his fault. Fang Cheng angrily told him not to make him laugh. He shouted and asked how he could explain this to his dead parents, and whether it was he who burned a whole crowd of innocent people. He shouted that he had no right to even try to say anything about innocence. The main character swung his black sword. The Fire Lord tried to stop him and say something. Fang Cheng cut his fiery body in half and told him if he had anything to say, go to hell and say it to those who died because of him. The Fire Lord fell to the ground in front of him. He thought that as long as his flame continued to burn, he would be able to restore his body and resurrect at any time. The flame flew past the main character behind his back. Someone shouted that the weeds needed to be pulled out by the roots. A red motorcycle was riding along the ground. Its wheels were covered in spikes. Pressing the fiery body of the Fire Lord with its wheels, the motorcycle stopped. The Fire Lord, scattered under the wheels of the motorcycle, screamed in pain. Dispersing into the air, he said that he was just a pawn of the demonic church, and if he killed him, the high priest would not leave it like that. He said that he would find and destroy it. Swinging his sword, Fang Cheng said that he didn't care and was going to end this church anyway. A swing of the sword dispelled the last remnants of the Fire Lord's flames. The main character, shrouded in a red aura, stood with a sword in his hand. He thought it was a good catch, and after killing the Fire Lord, he gained the skill of flame power. Fang Cheng took the handles of the motorcycle. Having mounted the motorcycle, he put the sword behind his back and thought with a grin that it was time to leave here, because if Du Lan clings to him, then he will have problems. The main character rode off on a motorcycle, kicking up dust in the air. Du Lan fought people with flaming heads by slamming them into the floor, ceiling, and walls with his huge bony hands. The guys hit the ground with force. Du Lan cursed and thought that because of those puppets, he couldn't follow the fight of those two demons. Leaving the bar, he jumped over overturned cars. Looking at the battlefield, Du Lan said, it looks like he was a little late. Rain fell from the dark sky onto the dark alley. The main character was riding down the alley on a motorcycle. Suddenly he fell off the motorcycle to the ground. He clenched his teeth and began to gradually return from his demonic form to his human one. Leaning his back on something, he said that now he could breathe out. Red energy dissipated around him. The extermination demon asked the protagonist if he was sure that he wanted to fight the high priest. He said it would be very difficult. Fang Cheng said that he was responsible for the death of his parents, and he would not rest until he killed him with his own hands. The demon of extermination punched him in the chest, laughed and said that he had willpower. He said that it would help him become stronger. The main character, exclaiming in pain, asked if he was trying to kill him. 
40 minutes later, there was a fire truck not far from the bar. The masked and hooded man said that this fire lord died after all. Another man wearing the same clothes said that recklessness is destructive. Taking off the mask from his face, the guy said that this should have been left to him from the very beginning, and he himself would deal with the ritual in Dongzhou. He had slightly long black hair, yellow eyes with black whites, and he said with a grin to tell it to the high priest. Pushing off from the ground, the guy said that he definitely wouldn't screw it up. Three black spears appeared in his hand as he hung in the air above the three people, and he said that, after all he was the one chosen to inherit the power of the shadow demon. Men in blue uniforms were rushing around, saying that it seemed like that was where the demons were. Three black spears pierced the ground where their shadows were. Upon landing, the guy said, shadow of death. He said they were unlucky to catch his eye. Blood gushed from the men's backs. The next morning, opening the door, Fang Cheng smiled and told his elder sister that he had returned. She exclaimed, turning around sharply. His older sister said he was finally back. She said she started to worry because he didn't answer his calls for a long time. The main character, apologizing, said that he had been too busy hunting demons lately, but everything went well, and he even had enough to buy a gift for her. She asked about the gift. Fang Cheng said with a smile that he bought that store and now it belongs to her. Handing her the keys, he told her to try hard because she was now the manager of her store. His older sister's eyes widened in amazement. With her hands on her hips, she cocked her head to the side and asked about how expensive it must have been. She said that he should think better of himself and buy himself an apartment for his future family, because he would not be single forever. Smiling, Fang Cheng told her to just consider it an investment in the future, and if they could make money from the store, they could buy a new apartment. Sighing, his older sister said that he had convinced her and he seemed to have grown a lot. She said that she, as his older sister, was very happy to see him like this. Putting the envelope on the table, she said that he had received a letter from the hunter's union, and it had his name on it, so she did not open it. Having opened the envelope, the main character exclaimed that he had been given an official hunter's license. His older sister said that he is now considered a real hunter, which is great. The main character thought that this was ironic, because tomorrow was the hunter's exam at his academy, and with this license he had nothing to fear. The location of the exam is at the Hunter Academy. A man in a business suit with a scar on his face greeted everyone and said that they were examiners from the Hunter's Union, and today they would be responsible for their exam. He said that if they could pass this exam, they would receive a Hunter's license. The guys exclaimed enthusiastically and the man wished everyone good luck. The guy with the shaved head said with a grin that Fang Cheng never showed up and he won't get a license. Shen Tianyu said with a grin that he probably realized that he would not be able to show anything in the exam, and became sad. He said that, however, even if he had come, nothing would have worked out for him. Smirking gloomily, Chen Tianyu thought that last time he was caught off guard and that's why he won. And he's been training like crazy lately, so he doesn't stand a chance this time. Wang Yu said that she knows Fang Cheng better than them, and he will definitely come. Chen Tianyu said that she is fantasizing. The main character said with a smile that a lot of people had gathered here. Long Yu exclaimed that he had arrived. Cheng Fang said that they were about to graduate from the academy, so he couldn't help but come. He said that he came to refuse to take part in the exam. Long Yu exclaimed in shock and asked if he was joking. Chen Tianyu mockingly said that losers will always remain losers, and he didn't even have the courage to try. The guy with the shaved head said with a grin that his girlfriend said she knew him better than they did. The main character frowned. He said they seemed to misunderstand him and he decided to back out because it wouldn't make sense since he already had a hunter's license. Long Yu thought that his progress was truly amazing. Cheng Fang pointed his finger at him and asked with a grin if he could come up with something more realistic. The guy with dark hair asked if he really thought that they would believe this nonsense, because he was just a weakling. The man with the scar said that if a student has obtained a hunter's license in advance, he is exempt from taking the exam. But to do this, he must verify the authenticity of the license himself. The main character agreed and thought that he had guessed about it. The man took out a black license from the envelope. He exclaimed loudly in amazement. The man said it was a genuine license issued by the Hunter's Union. He said that he had a C-class, and the vice president of Zhu Tai personally assessed him. The guy with the shaved head asked if it was a joke. The guy with dark hair exclaimed that he was just a student, and all students could only get a D-grade. Chen Tianyu said that this is impossible. Wang Yu, with her hands on her hips, asked how long he was going to hide the fact that he had become a C-class hunter. He said it was insulting. Fang Cheng apologized and said that it just happened yesterday. 
a crowd of students surrounded him, shouting that he was incredible, and they always knew that he was a true genius. Someone said that if he wants to gather a squad, don't forget to invite him too. The main character, exhaling, thought that he would never understand people, because just recently they laughed at him, ridiculing his weakness, and today they smile and praise his strength. The man with the scar said that he truly had a great future ahead of him, and the day was near when they would hear about the powerful demon hunter Fang Cheng. He asked if he would like to join the ranks of the Hunters' Union and start working for the good of their city. People in the crowd exclaimed in admiration that he had been invited by the Hunters' Union, and he definitely had a promising future ahead of him. Chen Tianyu gritted his teeth angrily. The main character said that this is a very tempting assumption. He said with a serious face that he would refuse. Fang Cheng thought that he couldn't walk in front of other people in his demon killer form, so he wouldn't join the troops for now. The man with the scar said that he did not think that anyone in his memory would refuse such a generous offer from the Hunter's Union. Long Yu thought with a smile that he must have his own reasons for refusing, and she didn't think that any of them were able to understand him. The scarred man told his colleague that the Dongju Hunter's Union issued him a C-class hunter license straight away, and the president of Tai must really appreciate him. He suggested not to pester him about the proposal. The man in dark glasses said they wouldn't force him. Turning around, he said that he hoped that he would change his mind. A man with a scar approached the students and told everyone to disperse because the exam would begin soon. The main character said that they would see each other again. He thought that interacting with people bores him, and even with demons it is not so boring. Long Yu told him that she was also not going to fall behind, so she would definitely pass this exam, and this time she would show her best. They touched fists and Fang Cheng said that he was confident that she could handle it, and he would be rooting for her. There was a bright blue sky above the clock tower. The guy, falling to his knees, asked why he had awakened such a bad ability, because he would have to study for another year. The guy with lilac hair laughed and said that he passed the exam without any problems and was now officially an E-class hunter. The girl next to him said that he really got a cool ability and she would also like to be able to summon weapons. The guy asked them if they had heard that the village chief had awakened a C-rank wind ability. The guys congratulated Chen Tianyu for awakening D-rank thunderbolts. One of the guys said that, however, he was still far from Fang Cheng. Chen Tianyu angrily hit them with an electric fist and told them to shut up because he would definitely teach this loser a lesson. Students walked past food stalls. Sitting at the table, Long Yu told the main character with a smile that today's dinner is at her expense. He congratulated her on awakening her C-rank ability, and she was now officially a hunter. He thought that Long Yu is truly a genius, but there is more to it than that, and he is sure that she has trained a lot to achieve such a result. Fang Cheng thought that his strength could now be estimated at about an average C-rank level, so the difference between them was minimal, and he should also try and become stronger. Long Yu said that in the future she plans to take the exam and try to get a job in the Demon Hunter department. She asked what about him. The main character, looking at the red energy around his hand, said that he would continue to work alone for now. The extermination demon laughed and told him that his wife was planning to join the Demon Slayer division. He said she might even come for his head in the future. The main character waved his hand and drove him away. Long Yu asked what happened. The main character, awkwardly scratching the back of his head, told her not to pay attention, and everything was fine. Smiling, he said that he supported her decision in any case and hoped that she would make her desires come true very soon. Long Yu said that this is what she wishes for him and she is confident that he will soon become one of the most powerful demon hunters. She thought that now that they had graduated from the academy, she and Fang Cheng would meet even less often. The news anchor reported that there was an invasion of shadows in the southern part of the city. She said that many people in the area had already turned into shadow demons. The presenter said that they attack everyone who comes into their sight, so they recommend evacuating the area as soon as possible, and now professional hunters are already working at the scene. Wang Yu said that this is strange, and first there were arson, and now there are shadows. Fang Cheng said that the Devil Church must be involved in this again, and it seems they are planning to raise Dongju to the ground. He said that he would check everything himself. Wang Yu asked if he would go hunting again. The city under the red sky was destroyed. A black creature that looked like a wolf with glowing yellow eyes suddenly opened its mouth. The quick blow tore the two wolves apart. The main character, with a sword in his hand, thought that even dogs can turn into shadow demons. Frowning, he thought that he did not think that these dogs could kill so many hunters, and he was sure that more powerful demons were roaming nearby. A huge centipede demon appeared behind him. Fang Cheng turned around sharply. 
He jumped back and a black spear stabbed into the ground in front of him. Blood gushed from his mouth and he looked down in surprise, looking at the black spear sticking out from his shadow on the ground. The main character thought that he was attacking his shadow, and his body was injured. A huge centipede stood on the ground in front of him. The creature charged, and Fang Cheng jumped to the side. The demon of extermination asked him with a grin when he became such a weakling, because he almost died from the first blow. Fang Cheng, sliding backwards on the ground, said that the attacks of these shadow monsters have some kind of poisonous effect. But fortunately he has the self-healing ability, so there should be no problem. Behind him stood many shadow demons armed with swords, chains, or road signs. The main character thought in amazement that they managed to surround him. He turned around and looked at the shadow demons who wanted to kill him. Fang Cheng's hand took on a demonic form, and he thought that now is not the time for pity, and these people have already turned into demons, so they need to be destroyed. He swung his sword at the shadow demons. Dark energy broke the sword of one of the monsters attacking him in half. The shadow demons in front of him disappeared into thin air. A huge centipede raised its head above him, shooting black spears from its mouth. Fang Cheng thought, It seems like the time has come to test the power of the flame that he inherited from the Fire Lord. Red energy enveloped his sword. Hitting the centipede with his sword, he ended up behind her. The red energy threw the centipede aside, slamming it into the rocks. Another monster jumped out of the ground and rushed to attack, its toothy mouth wide open. The main character said it looks like all these demons are targeting him. He blocked the monster's jaw with his sword. The jaws began to close around him and he clenched his teeth. The monster continued to attack, pushing Fang Cheng back with its pressure. His feet, sliding along the ground, kicked up dust into the air. Shrouded in red energy, standing in front of the monster attacking him, he thought that they were quite strong. He heard a scream behind him, calling for help. Monsters that looked like sharks tore people apart with their sharp teeth. Having struck the monster with a sword, the main character exclaimed that there are now sharks here too. He asked what was going on here. Monsters that looked like sharks surrounded him. The demon of extermination said that all these demons are controlled by the shadow demon, and if he wants to get rid of them all at once, then he needs to deal with him. The main character, jumping onto a stone, said he understood. The demon shouted at him to be careful because they were attacking again. Swinging his sword, enveloped in red energy, Fang Cheng said that he would first clear the way. Dark energy pushed the sharks back. Fang Cheng thought that he would try to combine the powers of flame power and black mist, creating a fiery black mist. A stream of red energy shot forward. The shadow demons in front of him were torn apart, dispersing into the air. Exhaling, the main character said, it looks like they are finished. He thought that the only thing that made him happy was that he had received a whole bunch of demonic energy. The demon of extermination told him that it was too early to rejoice. He told him to look at the sky. There were a huge number of black birds in the red sky. The main character asked if they were kidding. The guy with the sword looked up and asked if these birds were also shadow demons. Another guy said they seemed to be heading in the same direction. The birds flew towards the roof of one of the destroyed buildings, on which a silhouette of a man in some kind of black funnel could be seen. The guy with black hair, laughing, said that this was fun, and they would continue their shadow play. 